presenting Orson Welles as the third man. The lives of Harry Lyons. The fabulous stories of the immortal characters originally created in the motion picture The Third Man with Zilda Music by Anton Garrett. That was the shot that killed Harry Lyons. I didn't see it beneath the end. So the only thing I've ever made is The Third Man. Goulashes and shardashes. Shardashes being something you dance and goulash being something you eat as you go for all that paprika. Me, I love it. So, when I got that telegram, I took the first train to Hungary. Maybe I'd better tell you about the telegram first. Dear Mr. Lyon, it says, my bank is going to be robbed and I need your help. It was signed, technically, evidently a man's name, nobody I knew. I knew all about bank robbery, however, and I was dying to help. Besides, as I say, I love paprika. So, I started packing my bank. Why? What 
Why? You mean why? Let me just come back to you what I mean by everything I say, Secretary. I said why, and I meant why. You put my little taxes in the service company. You made me a very substantial down payment on services you rented, and now, when I get here, you want me to tell you about myself. That's just plain silly, old man. It's obvious that you went to all that trouble and expense to get me here. You knew about me already. I'm the one to ask the question, <laughs> not you. <laughs> better and better. Mr. Lyme, if you were just a little less notorious as a cook, I'd all be your vice president in my bank. I forgive the insult, Mr. Begerty. Uh, what do you mean, insult? Now you go ask me what I mean again. I meant insult. Now, don't you get pompous on me, Lyme. You are a crook. A well-famous one. You don't want to deny that. What I don't want is very simple, Mr. Begerty. I don't want to be a vice president of your bank. Oh? Oh, 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 I follow you now. <laughs> don't worry, Lime. Uh, I promised you $20,000. Uh, I promised you $20,000. I'm getting it in the post. Oh, wait a minute. And you'll get it without having to serve it another person. You bank. promised me $20,000, old man. I think you make me a dream about the joke money you folks pass off on each other locally, I know. I carry my own microscope for reading the fine type. Very well, very well. $20,000 a day. And... Don't you want to know what I expect you to do, sir? I suspect that you keep making me repeat myself. I told you before that I'm a big boy now. If you're giving me 20,000 bucks, I can relax. I'm not worried about asking you silly questions. You're going to get around eventually to telling me what you expect me to do for it. Hmm. Hey, did you ever hear of a bank giving a reward? Yes, yeah, but only after a bank robbery. Exactly. Uh. Exactly. Only after a bank is robbed. I'm reversing the procedure. I'm giving the reward. Well, that's the little capery that you want me to rob your bank for you. Well, not at all, not at all. A reward is usually given for apprehending the thieves who have robbed the bank. What I want you to do, Harry, I, I may call you Harry. Certainly, old man, call me Harry to give you an info. Well, Harry, what I want you to do is to apprehend the robbers before the robbery is committed. <laughs> Very clever, don't you think so? Uh, have a little cigar. <laughs> In my business, I may get in the way of an awful lot of screwy deals, but I can tell you that never in a long career have I been offered in complete seriousness a loopier proposition than Mr. Beckett. I think the key to the whole affair was Mr. Beckett's junior officer in the bank at this time, Mr. Coulter. The Lord has lost his photo in the full name. Hmm. He's one of our vice presidents. I think. Like I think it's right now, the man is the you know, principal criminal. Huh? Come here and I'll show you. Come this way. You can see him through the glass, man. Hmm. There he is. Oh, that one? That can dance to the right. Yeah. With all those silly hairs pasted over his bald head. That's the man. He doesn't look very dangerous to me. Oh, don't? Dangerous? He is the brain of a trackworth bird and the charm of a worm. Now that I look back on it, I can't imagine how I ever persuaded myself to be jealous. Jealous? I don't follow you, old man. If I have a bald head, it would be. I do tend to be jealous. Lulu often charged me about it, and I have promised to friend you in the same way. The part of my Lulu, you mean the girl in the flower shop who goes to weigh that Lulu? She's the only Lulu I know, Mr. Lyon. How does it happen that you are acquainted with her? You see this carnation? Yes, yes. Lulu sold it to me, overcharged me, scandalously, as a matter of fact. Oh, Lulu is a working girl, she must live. How does it happen you know her? What makes you think I do? You know her name? Oh, one of the other customers called that while I was still in the shop. He happened to be little fellow. You just pointed out to you over there the vice president's uh, photo. Yeah, the vice president. I hate to keep hunting in these commercial matters. Thank you, old man. But just how does my $20,000 reward come into picture? Let us retire to my inner office, Harry. I never tell you. Okay. Come. Uh, sit down, please, Harry. Have another cigar. My pockets are bulging with cigars now, old man. Let's concentrate on the 20000 Miss Dover, Miss Dover. No matter who calls, don't disturb me. Not on any account. I'm having an important conference. Yes, oh, jealousy, Harry. Jealousy is a terrible. Yes, there certainly is. Now about this reward. Jealousy is the green-eyed monster who does not to meet the tree frog. That's how the poor Shakespeare expressed it. The poor Shakespeare said it off for now. But if it had not been for jealousy, I would never have followed this corridor into Lulu's shop. And if I hadn't done that, I would never have discovered the digging. Digging? What digging? What would you say, Harry? I was to tell you that running under the street from Lulu's flower shop to this bank, there is a tunnel. Tunnel? What would you say if I told you that? Well, I'd say, well, 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 what do you know? That's what I said. That's what I said. I found out about it. 
And that's why I say now that I must never forget to be grateful to Jenna. The situations I've discovered that there's nothing between the lone one. Are nothing serious. Uh, and uh, do you know what I say to that? No. A couple of rude words. Yes, but why? Why? You find him scrambling away together like a couple of chubby moles, digging away in the general direction of your bank vault, and you say there's nothing serious between them. Tell yourself I'm sure of that. I have Lulu's life. And besides, what could you possibly see in a certain identity like Kodo? No, the only one who thinks it's serious is Kodo. And that's the whole point. Kodo is a Jew. And he's kept for it. Oh, yes. And who's the mastermind? And what does Bodo think about that? He languishes in ignorance. He knows nothing. But he thinks that he aspires. He fails to aspire. To my position in the bank. How does Lulu fit in? I must tell you that Lulu has given me some reason to hope that she will someday make him the happiest man in the world. And how would she do that? By giving up Bodo or sending you a big bouquet of roses? Let's get there on the page, you man. Wedding bells can ring out from Buddha to the test and back again, but I won't be there to throw any rice unless I get paid. What is it exactly you want from the lessons on how to help Coder and Lulu rob your bank? Coder's going to do the robbing. The fact that this is my bank, I'm only a fellow. And then Coder gives you them. Yes, to Lulu, is that it? No, that would be... That's just what I was thinking. No, no, every day Coder is supposed to take the paper money from the bank with cages and place it in the box. Yes. This is his responsibility. Tonight, however, he will not do that. He will leave the money outside the vault hidden in a large filing cabinet. For the entire bank. Carefully, right? All I can say is this folder of yours is a very cooperative type of chap. So. Don't call him this folder of yours. He isn't. It's a folder of mine. Now it's your own way, old guy. What comes next? You, I suppose. You come a half hour later with a dark lantern and a gunny sack. You wrap up the money, join Louis, who's been waiting for your truck to keep the flower shop, and the two of you, hand in hand, move off down the road into the sunrise, off in the very choicest Hungarian hooskow. Hmm? What is a hooskow? A jail or prison, a place of forcible incarceration, a lockup for bad little bank robbers. Not at all, not at all. It is Hoda who goes to prison. Oh, yes, and how do you work that? Well, that is one of the things I want to do well Oh, I can't really have to earn that $20,000. Well, you can start by having it deposited in my name and in somebody else's bank, old man. Why now? And why another bank? Well, every bank in Budapest isn't going to be robbed tonight, so I think I'd prefer one of the others. And I'll take it now because I know you wouldn't want me to go to the police with what is, after all, a fairly disordered little school. Good, but you should, but that's blackmail. Oh, watch your language, old man. Blackmail's a nasty word. You know, all I want is protection for my poor little 20000 Now, I'll give you service for it, too, but I want to be absolutely positive that you're ready to meet your payroll. Very well. You'll have your money, but you will have it. I'm going to you more solid facts, old man. Well, it all began with this insane jealousy of mine before. Oh, yeah? I took two colors. He used to go into Lulu's flower shop at night long after it was closed. And one time he left the shutter on that and I went in. There were no lights in the shop itself, but I could hear two from the face of the room. I opened it that door. Yeah. Yes, it was not to be had. What do you think I saw? You saw Lulu, Folder, and three men all hard at work digging a tunnel. Yeah. How did you know? I didn't, I guess. After all, you told me it was a tunnel. But the three men, how did you know about them? I'm uh, still guessing. It's pretty obvious to Mr. Fodor and Lulu couldn't dig much of a hole without getting some help. Tell me this. It was Lulu who persuaded you to call me in on this deal, wasn't it? How did you do that? Still just guessing, old man. Just guessing. Now, let me get on for a minute and stop in my mind. When you saw what Lulu and Fodor were doing, you went home and grew this for a while, and a few years after she confronted you. It was the next day. Oh, okay, it was the next day. Lulu admitted she was planning to rob the bank, but said she was just using Fodor, and you were the only one she really cared about. If you joined the party, it's you she'd run off with leaving the Fodor holding the bank. Yes. An empty bag. How am I doing? Oh, you are a clever man. Sure I am. That's why Lulu had you sent for me. You see, the idea is that Fodor will hide the money outside the vault and leave. Then, according to the arrangement that we understand, Lulu will come through the tunnel at night with her helpers and take the money back under the streets through the tunnel. Well, uh, who did she tell Porter these helpers were? She said one of them is her brother and the other two are cousins. And what did she tell you? That's what she told me. Why? Nothing, 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 nothing. Give me one more guess, hmm? Okay. After Porta leaves the money, what you do is crawl back through the tunnel with a sack of currency clenched in your teeth. But no, that wouldn't make any sense. Well, if you'd run into a couple of brothers crawling in the opposite direction. I, I know that anything to do with the tunnel. You see, Porta leaves the money out just before closing. That way, he investigates the risk of escape. So there's nothing to stop me from letting him step in with my key at night, walking away with the money. Who could suspect me? It's a perfect plan, Harry. Yeah, it's been quite a time you look at it. Uh, but tell me about the brothers. What are they supposed to think about all this? Well, they don't know about it. Lulu hasn't told them. But the news will reach them eventually. And what then? They must be implicated somehow, along with Photo. But I must be protected. I'm Lulu. That's what you're saying. Have another cigar. <laughs> Oh, 
Orson Welles returns in just a moment as the third man. Orson Welles, as the third man, continues with today's story, Too Many Crooks. Naturally, the first thing I did after making my farewell to Mr. Peckett was to go across the street and bear call on the Lulu. Harry, yeah. listen to me, Captain. I'm listening, honey. Okay, so Captain, we'll hit up your old city. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah, so go and do some of the room. Now, what about it? Go down and wait for me. You never can tell when four door checkers will be bursting in here. You've got to be supposed to check up on each other and bind the rain in. Go to the captain. I'll be with you as soon as I can close up. What, what about the boy in the room? Oh, what do you mean? The construction crew, the Corelli. Oh, and take it you told you about the Corelli? I would have found out anyway, Lily. Oh, Lily. Okay, what happened to you? Unless you shut up the store, isn't there a way out? No, but they don't be finished work before I'm back. Besides, what they don't know won't hurt me. Lily, or rather Lulu, it looks to me as though just about everybody around here is due to be first time. But they don't know. I found the gold rooster and sat down on the terrace in the restaurant to wait for Mr. Beckett to be staying. Over a glass of cocaine, I tried to add up the situation as it then. As I could see, the whole setup was like a beautiful painting. No matter how you looked at it, you're confident. I don't know, Harry. Don't want anything. I haven't time. Don't worry, Lily. I'm not here to celebrate. We can have our party after. I know who's going to pay the sense. I wish you'd call me Lily. Okay, Lily. Now, here's all the sense I can make out of this little paper. You came here with a Pirelli game, right? No, they came first. And they sent for me to work in the flower shop for a front. But Connor was their idea. Then you sent for me. That was your idea. You're right. My photo thinks he's going to divvy up with the Pirellis and marry you on the show. Something like that. And secondly, thinks something like the same something. The president thinks he's going to put it over the vice president. What about the construction crew? You don't mean Walter yeah. and the others? The rallies, the original burglars. What are they going to get out of it? According to Peckett, it's going to be the old double cross. But if I know you, Peckett is in for the same gentle treatment. Harry, why should anybody get anything out of this? Except? No fear, Harry. Book a couple of spaces for us on the first milk train out of Budapest. We'll be sure to get reservations on the bulletproof car. I wish you'd call me Lulu. <laughs> A lot of trusting Hungarian depositors line up at the bank, leave their hard-earned tangos with the impressive-looking gilt cages with what they fondly believe is safekeeping, and hurry home to have their evening plate of goulash. Closing time comes and goes. Second, he doesn't leave. He just pretends to, and stays skulking in his office. Meanwhile, Fodor takes the big packages of tangos, which, as you know, is Hungarian for money. Due to this, the door of the vault, he slams the vault loudly. This being for the benefit of the janitor, who is deaf anyway and doesn't hear, and quickly stows the loot in the empty filing cabinet, which he has thoughtfully left nearby for just this purpose. He then goes home and passes a very restless night. The moon rises over the city and winks with its own reflection in the Danube. A lot of good Hungarians are in their beds. The others are all in a nightclub called the Arizona, dancing a shardash. They do not come into this story, so we'll leave them that thing. Down under the street, the Corellis, those are deaf bank robbers, continue to dig. They are putting the finishing touches on their tunnel, and we will not listen in on them because their conversation is very vulgar indeed. <laughs> In his luxurious office, Mr. Peckett is sits biting his nails and dreaming of a long West Indian cruise with Lulu in an adjoining deck chair. As the gang in the tunnel understand it, when the clock strikes 12, they are to open the secret trap door which they have previously prepared inside the bank, a section of tiling near the vault, go to the filing cabinet and take out the money which Porter has left there, thus eliminating the noise and inconvenience of breaking into the vault and, first closing the loose tile after themselves, and pull back with the loot under the street into the flower shop, out into the night and as far away from hungry as possible. As I say, that's the way the gang in the tunnel understands. This is also the arrangement as Mr. Fodor understands it with a trifling difference. 
that he expects Lulu to stop by for him with his share of the profits. Like Mr. Feckety, he is biting his nails and dreaming of tropical cruises. And what of Lulu? What of Lulu indeed? It is Lulu's little plan to foozle everybody, Corelli, Fodor, and Feckety. She's led them all on to just this point. It is the point of departure. Lulu's departure. Lulu and all those neatly wrapped packages of pingos with trouble in it. It's all just a little bit too much for one little girl to handle alone, so Harry Limestone sent to her. Harry is supposed to assist at the general foozling of one and all, and then, in due time, of course, he's to be foozled as well. Lulu will send Harry off to mail a postcard, and when he gets back, Lulu will continue to travel alone. There's nothing to keep her company but the loot. That is right there, it's the way Lulu is The clock high in the steeple of San Stefano strikes twelve. This is the signal. Mr. Corelli, that celebrated expert with his two able assistants, starts toward the bank. The tunnel was not built for comfort in the going on hands and feet of the trifle rough. There's a bit of genteel cursing, but hearts are high. At the sound of the clock, Mr. Peckerty removes the bound bundles of money from their place of safety and checks once again the bolts and fastenings which keep the loose tile in his face. In the darkness, Mr. Peckerty smiles. Satisfied with the contrary to the Corelli's expectation, the bank end of the funnel is firmly and irrevocably closed. Still smiling, he starts toting the money toward the side door for the key. Mr. Beckett is the first illegal possessor of a key. On the outside, Lula with a high speed car is supposed to be waiting for him. Unfortunately, however, a moment earlier, Harry Lyme on the flower shop end of the tunnel had persuaded Lula to go down for a moment and tell the boys not to try lifting that trick tile for at least a half hour. Analyze the merits of the suggestion. There's plenty of time now to think this over because Box Hill Harry in the flower shop has bolted down the trap door. The clock has stopped striking, of course, and Mr. Feggity pops out of his bank looking for all the world like a jolly Christmas shopper with his arms loaded with bundles. There is a high speed car waiting for Mr. Feggity, all right, but it is full of strange gentlemen, and they are all dressed. Mm -hmm. Put up your hands, Peggy. Put up your hands. You're under arrest. What's the matter? Oh, not at all, old man. No mistake at all. You see, gentlemen, just as you were told, there he is. And there's the money. Come along now, Peggy. We are taking you in. You are. Not a bit of it, old man. I wouldn't dream of selling on you. No, the cops got the tip off of an anonymous letter. And you know how you spell anonymous? L U L U. Look. She did. Lulu. Lulu, that wouldn't be Lulu Hart, would it, uh, alias Lily the Smith? Yes, officer, I believe so. There's a reward offered for her capture, isn't there? Huh? I should say there is. What about the Corelli gang? They've got the biggest price on their heads in Central Europe. Oh, that's lovely. It's all beginning to add up when you throw in the generous reward Mr. Beckett he posted in the name of his bank this afternoon. No, and you're not going to collect that, are Why you? Why not, old man? I saw you put up the money for me to collect before the bank was robbed. You also want to report the Corellis, and if you yourself are foolish enough to go breaking the law, you'll just have to tell it to the judge. I'll say I'll tell him about you. Go ahead. I haven't broken any laws with her. You'll only help me collect my various rewards. Well, that's not a fact, Lyme. What is your connection with this affair? What have you done? Officer, all I did was turn a bolt on a trap door. Nothing at all, really. Just a quick thing. And now, if you've got some spare handcuffs ready, I think you'd better open it up again. The folks down below may be getting a little fretful, and I think they'll appreciate a change of scene if you'll come with me, officer. I'll show you the place. Really, Mr. Lyme, I can't tell you how. Please, please, old man, don't mention it. Pleasure, I'll show you. Don't you have a cigar?
And now, Harry Lawson. You know, friends, I have thought of substituting those fast packages of fingers for the same weight of old newspapers. But the rate of exchange wasn't so good on the finger just then, so I resisted the temptation. After all, as Mother always said, too many crooks spoil the goulash.
Is there anything in store that just being malicious and perverse? If it weren't that it's alive, I don't know what would have happened. We're deeply indebted to you. Oh, you don't owe me anything at all. I did what any other American would have done. I wish we could repay you for your kindness. Well, you know, I, I think so. Maybe you can. Wonderful. Just tell us what it is. Well, I've got to buy my sister a gift. It's her birthday. I don't have to know about jewelry. I want to you just come along and help me shop. Of course you can. Amy does most of my shopping for me. Very good at it. Wonderful. I'm sure she'd be delighted to help you. Don't you want me to help you get your things unpacked? I'm already unpacked, thanks to that customs official. No, you go ahead. Just drop me at the hotel. You don't mind, do you, Miss Collins? No, not at all. Good. You'll leave. Now, I'd like both of you to be my guests at dinner tonight. That's very kind of you. We'd be delighted. Well, it's my pleasure, Mrs. Collins. My pleasure. We deposited that Mr. Donald in the room and Amy and I went shopping. I took her along to Portland before you and I were over on Maple Feather Territory. What are you looking for, Mr. Nye? Please, call me Harry. All right. Can I call you Amy? If you wish. Hmm. You don't sound very enthusiastic. Please call me. That's much better. What do you want to buy here? Nice jewelry and necklace. And then Jonathan is wearing things, but it's something like that. <laughs> you don't know much about jewelry, do you? Well, I know what I like. Most of the time, the things I like you can find in a dime store. You won't find Mrs. Donaldson's locket in a dime store. It costs about $20,000. <laughs> You're kidding. No, that's a real emerald she has set in the locket. That'd be crazy, Charlie. Like that flashing on a necklace. Oh, well, it's not very wise, but she's very sentimental about it. Her husband gave it to her just before he died. She swore to wear it every day of her life. She was very devoted to him. Well, I suppose you think I'm pretty much of a chump of her jewelry. You have good taste. I also have good luck meeting you. Like it very much. You know why? Well, just half an hour ago, you and I were total strangers. Now here I am helping you buy a gift to this woman. If we'd known each other for a long time. Well, nothing wrong with that. No. Just at the moment you entered the scene, things seemed to move fast and efficiently. Go away, come back again, do it more slowly. I suppose I sound foolish. Because you like me too soon. Well, I... Well, I, I like you too soon. Well... That's probably too fast for you, too, but you see, I'm a man of business on his mind. Probably not a very efficient way of talking to a gentle soul like you. Oh, no, I prefer straightforward people. All right, now, you be straightforward. What was your first reaction to me when you first saw me? I... I was interested. Perhaps... Maybe in trees. You have a way of condensing relationships. Well, if people like each other, they don't need a calendar full of time to know. Good things will come. Here's a shop. Well, they all look pretty. That filigree pin. That's very nice. Which one? Uh, the one near the large cameo. Oh, yes, it is very pretty. Shall we go in? Wait. This is the other thing. Oh, I'm thinking your father. I heard you from that thing. We were talking American, a totally different language. I'm trying to reach a Via Salvatore Road. Could you inform me how to get there? Sure, oh, man. Turn right the next corner and go straight to three squares. Oh, I'm much great. Man. Right, all right. Would you like to... Uh, you like a cigarette? No, no, thank you very much. Just turn right at the next corner. Oh, I'm unhappy to travel you further, oh, but uh, do you have a match? I'm sorry, but I don't have any matches with me. I have a light. Barely smoke uh, turn right at the next corner. And three squares and down. three eh? squares down. Good day to you all. Good day. Uh, we'll meet again, eh? Good day. You seem most reluctant to leave. Yes. Uh, an odd fellow. Why did you refuse to give him a light? I didn't like his face. Did you ever see him before? Oh, yes, sir. He acted as if he knew you. Oh, I didn't care to know him. I think you gave him the wrong direction. Yes, it seems that if he followed your directions, he would find himself in the Bay of Naples. Sure, it won't dampen it. Sure. Enjoy Yes. There's just one thing I'd like to ask. What do you do, Mr. Uh, for a living? Oh, I'm a dealer in objets d'art. I wander through the world, collecting the best stuff. Sounds very. Oh, it is. It's all quite exciting. Oh, let's go in and buy that for a Orson Welles, we 
returns in just a moment as the third man. Here's only the last. Oh, God. 
Do you enjoy it, Mrs. Donaldson? Yes, Mrs. Donaldson. I have a wonderful idea. How would you all like to go for a drive? Pompeii. Yes, sir. Yes, it's only 10 o'clock. It's a full moon. Oh, but it's so to go. That's amazing. I've been here many times. May I have to see it at night? Isn't it close? Of course it is. We can go into the back way near the arena. I'm willing, Mrs. Donaldson. Try to stop me. What a long time. Just one thing. What is it? I only told me about your emerald locker. I couldn't take this. Don't you worry about it. I need to take it off. Oh, really? Except when I retire. Don't worry about it. It's perfectly safe. Besides, it's not really fine to prove it. No, I'm sure not. But all the same, I'd feel better if you left. Oh, no, no, I can't do that. Please don't say about it. All right, if you're sure. Let's go right now. Just let me say the bill. Come here, eh? Yes, you're a concert of the world. Excuse me. It was less than an hour drive to the ancient. It was a little concert. A dying record for it. It was a little chill. It was a little chill. It was a little chill. It was a little chill.
for the whole state, you, Mr. Lyon. Risking your life to save my locket. Oh, that's all right. You're a most strange man to take that way in the dark unarmed. Oh, I just wanted to see where Amy was and I had the sound. There he was, deftly removing the locket from your neck. I saw someone coupling around my neck, but I thought it was you. Oh, really? I, I was asleep, you know. Oh, yeah. I have my suspicions about this rubio from the first. Is the wound hurt much? No, it's nothing. It's a hole in my suit. And a bad bump on your head. You poor boy. Never mm -hmm. hero. Amy, you haven't said a word. You are a hero since they arrested that rubio man. I'm just stunned. Oh, I'm sorry we got you into this. I, I never should have taken you to Pompeii. It's all my fault. Of course not. That terrible man would try to snatch the lock up wherever I was. Just a lucky thing I met up with you. I'm going to give you a gift. You just must take it. A hundred pound note. Oh, I wouldn't think of it. It'd make you very happy if you took it. Oh, no, I absolutely don't. Please, wouldn't. Mr. Lance, please. Well, if it means so much to you, I'll give it, it to my favorite charity. Mm. Well, here we are at the hotel, facing south. Thanks to you. I must run upstairs. The whole thing is giving me a severe headache. You will call me in the morning, won't you, Mr. Lyon? Indeed, I will. Good night. Good night. Oh, Amy. I have a word with you. I'll be up in a moment, Mrs. Dunn. And bless you. And bless you, Mr. Lyon. I'm sorry about this evening, Amy. Oh, my. I'll take the lunch tomorrow. No, Why not? I never saw the frescoes on the wall. You didn't? No, I didn't find them, and I walked all the way around. I saw you from the front entrance. Oh. Besides, the man who deals in fine art would know an emerald locker from a down to a Yes. Should have thought of that. I was beginning to like him very much, Harry. Well, oh, I'm sorry. I'm not the kind of man you'd like to begin to like a little more. It's a pity. It'll never be any good. You might as well have the show every time. What about your sister? I haven't spoken to my sister in ten years, so it's a fool of my sister. Supposing I give it to you? No, thank you. You mean you wouldn't take it? No, no, I couldn't. Supposing if you didn't take it, I just threw it away. Oh, but you shouldn't do that.
Lives of Harry Lives. The fabulous stories of the immortal character originally created in the motion picture The Third Man, with zither music by Anton Kara. That was the shot that killed Harry Lives. Riding a tear from his feet. Are you in the wrong state? 
get the negative from your piece of paper, Kato. For 15000 Oh, thanks. And dismissal of all charges against me and your state over. What? The price of cheap governor to your career, your family. What governor you come? Just a moment. Very well, Lion. Get me those negatives and you'll receive your money. And put back. I'll take the money now. I expected that. Pay him now. How do you know you can trust him? <laughs> I know who's been out with Kato. I have to cut this. My, uh, fee? Here it is. You'd better count it, Mr. Lyon. But why? I trust you. No. Just how do you plan to contact Kato? That's easy enough. He was a man like Kato. I thought avoiding. You should know that very well, Governor. Uh, what is my next move? Right back to your nice town capital. Send your ivory tower Hadley and carry on business as usual. Very well. Well, start packing the stuff. Yes, sir. No. What? Nora stays with me. I... I want. Now, listen here, Lyon. Cato doesn't know about sight, does he? I don't think so. He's contacting me away from his office. Then she'll be our garbage and you can still pack, Nora. I want you to register another hotel. If I'm going to meet you at the cocktail lounge for three hours. Just what are you saying? Nora. I... I don't think she Well, who wants to tuck in the hall, Cato? Let me in. Come in, then. Well, what have you found out, Izzy? The entertainment governor has it like you want. Have a seat and keep the town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come to the point. We're staying away from the point. The governor is making contact with every main wood in New York. Nobody wants to go against Cato. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Only Hadley must be finding someone who will go against him because he leaves the hotel three hours ago. Leave? Checks out and taking the powder. But before that, he sends his girl down to the bar. Yeah, what girl? Who knows her name? But who this girl talks to down at the bar, you'll never get. Come on, Steve. I'm not playing Jetham games. All right, all right, Kate. But don't support me. I'm trying to tell you all the time. She meets a hairy lion. I hear her say the name. Harry Lyme's the only guy, but the only guy who can announce me up. What is the company to you? Come on. Glad to get you. Lyme, the coming to this game is going to be on my side. And Lyme will be. The Lyme, it's the Lyme. Nora, over there at Hope Community, you give us the name. Cato over at the bar. Oh, have a drink. What are you going to do about Cato? Careful. Yes, thank you. Just Nothing. Anything. I had a pretty wide choice. Waiter, Johnson, Warner, two.
Wilson Wells as the third man continues with play pitch. <laughs> Why you? You think you'll get away with it? 
person would know because the young lady was with me at the classroom. Uh, Hadley's secretary. I've got a great deal of time and effort on getting a complete file of your misdemeanor case. If I fail to contact her, copies of said file will immediately be sent to all state and federal law enforcement officers. Your typical tin type could be forgotten in the headlines about Clovis Cato. You wouldn't want to be named public enemy number one. Now, or at least he talked with him last night. By this time, he might be dead. Dead? Why don't you call the police, the FBI? You're the governor. Do something. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? The notorious lime child. The man's brutal, questionable, Lives only for himself. Yet, when he wishes, hide all this with the cloak of magnificence. Wait, Like this. No, I hate him. He's a horrible man. I. Oh, I don't know what he is. It's been terrible, all of it. Seeing Cato waiting all night for Harry's phone line, he'll be clean. Believe me, I'm stupid. Yes? Dr. Hatton, Dr. Hatton, Harry Lyle. Dr. Hatton, Dr. Hatton, Harry Lyle. Harry Lyle. Send them in, please. Yes, sir. What can it mean? Be too hasty, Mr. Governor. My proposition is as good as Mr. Lyon has come into the field. What? But you are going to... Lyon? Is this... this thug telling the truth? I have bought certain contracts for your signature, Governor. They'll allow Mr. Cato full scale operations in your state. Oh, no, you wouldn't. I can't believe it, Lyon. Not even you. The price of the negative, Governor. Oh, Mr. Lyon is a negative. face what good faith. But here you are, Harry. The negative and the rest of the picture. Oh, my goodness. Have you written it? I've written it to you this morning, Ron. You, how small can you get? Now, when you've done this case, I'm trying to get an out of it, the negative. Happy. Just find the dollar line, Happy, and everybody will be happy. Sold out because I trusted a rat. And here, back, Nora. Get out of the way. Ah! Down on the floor, Governor. Down on the floor. Hold it, Cato. My deal. Oh, yes? Yeah. Ah! Oh. Mm. What happened, Nora? I suggest you call an ambulance, young lady. There's been an attempt on Governor Hadley's life. My goodness. And keep those people out of here for a minute. Life, Harry, and all the time we save it, save it. I had to kill Cato. Take over this very lucrative business myself. I'll keep these negatives, Governor. You what? No, Harry, no. This is one time, Governor Hadley, when you're not getting off too easily. These incriminating negatives in my possession. In fact, the sword of Damocles is suspended over your uneasy head from now on. Call them with Harry Lyon at a new And now, if you excuse me. And I was thinking of a thing to Officer, I'm making a fire. Oh, yeah. 
Jackson, learning some love lessons. Girl named Nora. Nora, huh? Well, yeah, what's a good Irish name? She has to do with guys this time. Maybe I should see you on the Hey, I have a picture. Hurry, mine. Come back here. So long. Thank you. 
private banks, the streets full of American cars and grimy characters and night shifts. Oh, they're beautiful. As far as I can see, this is a kind of Switzerland with Arabs. Oh, business. I need to know the right place. Let me show you. Taxi. You know the Villa Maggetti? Villa Maggetti? Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, that means the great palace from the hill. I know it well. Good. Get in, Harry. I'm going to show you how beautiful can be. Oh, and turned its tortuous way through the native quarter, and then pretty soon we were out in the country. We were climbing steadily, I noticed, and passing beautiful villas, homes of rich expatriates who come to live in this strange little international settlement of Tangier, where you don't even have to register to your consulate. Nobody pays any income taxes at all. Uh, I think I neglected to mention that Patsy was beautiful. If I did, believe me, I was understating the situation. She had gray eyes and that clear, powdery gold hair that she seemed to be on the ship of I know an awful lot of girls, but none of them I've ever laid eyes on would give Patsy a really point. There may be better looking out there, most of them, but if there are, they're working for airlines on another track. As we climbed up, the moon bright hills of the Tangier. I forgot completely the strange business she brought me there. The advertisement in the paper, the airline tickets, and all the rest of it. I didn't care why I didn't want to the Tangier. I didn't care who's done it. What he wanted from me. I don't. I don't If you come to our business. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, the cab stopped. When did that happen? About five minutes ago. Where are we? Well, there's the bay below it. Oh, very pretty. It looks too low with light. Mm -hmm. No, not, not what I mean. Please. Mm -hmm. Why, thank you. Nice to meet you. Sam, that enormous place. Yeah, it's kind of private mansion, but I'm sure we'll be welcome. Hey, you take the key. The key? You mean? That's what I mean. You're my guest. <laughs> but, but, oh. You've been my guest all along. Gentlemen traveling to Tangier, visit to the best. But uh, what, what do you, you whistle the tune? Well, how do you know about it? I had a friend once who told me how fond you've always been of no, that music. No, I mean, how do you know about the ad in the paper? I ought to know. I paid for it. And my friend. I got a reduction from the ad. Come in, Harry. Here's a flashlight. I've got some of the returns in just a moment as the third man. Police to come and start asking questions. You can say that again. 
What have the cops got to do with you? Nothing yet. I'll tell them the switch. See that? Mm -hmm. The piano. About 30 gilt chairs, a big rolled-up carpet, all very splendid and grand. But which particular item am I supposed to admire? Carpet. I'm not a connoisseur, Patsy, so if you brought me here to get an appraisal, I'm afraid we're both wasting our time. Thinking about carpet. Do you know about heroin? Yes. Heroin is a drug. It is nasty and habit for me. And its sale is controlled by international law. Come on, tell me more. I don't know more about heroin. I don't think you speak of I don't use drugs, Miss Smith. But you sell them. I just told you that the sale of heroin is controlled by law. Are you suggesting... I'm that... suggesting that there isn't much you don't know about breaking the law. Any law. Well, according to you, I won't try to deny that my knowledge of the subject isn't fairly extensive. Why do you think I sent for you? Why do you think I brought you here? You're Harry Lyme, aren't you? Now, stop kidding for a minute and let's get down to the First business. of all, I think you'd better answer a few questions, Miss T. Smith, air host. That isn't necessary. Maybe not, sweetheart, but I'm a curious type. I like the facts before I take on a job, all of them. First of all, what's your racket? I haven't any racket. I'm an airline host. Yes, but why? Because it's a good job. Yes, because the run takes you to Tangier, am I right? That's partly right, yes. But listen, well, What's your real name? What's the piece? Well, play it my way, sweetheart, and we aren't playing it at all. You must need me awful bad to take all this trouble to look me up and move me. If you need me, you're going to cooperate. I'll start off with your real name and go on from there. Did you ever hear of a man named McGetty? Getty? Rico Getty? I met Rico once in Marseille. Another time in Casablanca, he comes from Portugal, isn't that right? He came from Portugal. You mean he's dead? Yes. I was his wife. I killed Rico myself. He wasn't a nice man. I guess he wasn't. I don't know. I saw him blind a man with a broken wine glass. You're right. He was a very nice man, but he was careless. How do you mean, careless? For his wine. What am I supposed to do? After all, there are only so many alternatives. I can make a joke about what you just told me or congratulate you or hand you to the cops. So now I think it's better if we treat it as a joke. So this is the story of Harry Lyon, man no country can hold. And it's just enough. <laughs> what, I think you're actually shocked. Maybe I'm not Harry Lyon at all. After all, an awful lot of people can think of that. Better be what, Lovegood? The original Harry Lyme? Not a facsimile? He doesn't like murder, Mr. McGetty. He says he starts with nothing. Well, believe you me, he starts with that. A, it's messy. B, it's silly. And C, there's no profit in it. Besides, Harry Lyme's mother always told him not to go around killing people. She said it was. You don't know the facts in the case, Harry. I was justified. I have to take my word. I guess I will at that. And now, Mrs. McGetty, if you don't mind, why have you brought me all the way to Africa to this empty house? You say there's a lot of heroin in that rug. Do I take your word for that? After you can look for yourself. I told you before, honey, I don't know anything about dope. You know people who do, don't you? People in Paris, in London, in New York. Not intimately. But you know how the drug traffic works. I don't. Something new for me, though, sometimes. It's all. I don't know how to dispose of it. I don't mind either, honey. I keep telling you that. How do you know it's so valuable? He told me. I've been keeping it here in the house for months now. The airline job I had is perfectly pleasant. But I don't know who to take it. I don't know what town's there to get surprised. I don't know the names of the agents. Rico kept me away from that kind of thing. All I can remember was hearing him talk about you. You've got to help me, Harry. What about the police? They don't know. They even know about the house. There isn't anything against him in Tangier. I heard about you. Don't you kill him? Did you out of the cops feel about that? They don't suspect me. There's no reason why they should. I had a good alibi. I wasn't even... Tell me how you did that somehow. So you can blackmail me, no. Just keep our relationship on a nice, clean... Now that's the way I like to be talking. Who are you? I'm talking about that letter that I'm getting. Now I think it would be easier all around if you and Mr. Lyman were here. Just hold the letter. You were there, you're fishing gun, I thought. How did you get in? I have to tell you, Madame, to get this explanation, Mr. Bernard. Who did go? He left it open. Now then. Uh, just a minute. Yes, Mr. Lyon? You seem to know my name, monsieur, but I'm afraid you have the advantage. It doesn't matter. I was, uh, I would say, a business associate of this 
you do business up there. Okay, don't tell me. Let me guess. You began in Indochina. You served three years in a penal colony in Brazil. They used to call you the doctor, am I right? I know. Dr. Bessie, that's your name. What was the detective you would make? I have a good memory, Dr. Bessie. I'm a professional collector of information. You will find the heroine in the piano. In the piano? No. It's probably a trick on the line. Suppose you go to the piano and extract the heroine. Uh, the don't be silly, old man. It would be very simple for me to extract a revolver from the piano. I think it would be unpleasant for both of us if we were really shooting. I must be police in the neighborhood. I must prefer you to find your dope and leave quietly. I'm a peace loving man. Very well. I'll look for myself. I'm keeping my eye on your line. Now, uh, wait a minute. There is nothing here. What if you were not your hands, Bessie? I'm warning you, I'll shoot if you don't. What? You did? Well, well, Bessie, quick, I must say congratulations. He said he was a good shot. Must have been both things. Should have kept his eyes on both of them. He wouldn't have been back. I wouldn't know, Mr. McGarry. I haven't asked any of them. Have you any plans? Yes, better get out of here. No, isn't that funny? That's just what I was going to suggest. Take the head of it. Mm -hmm. You can't it just as it is in the rug. No, thanks. I have a bad back and I hate this too cold, though. Why don't we just leave it where it is? Let the cops find it give up $100,000 worth of dough, you crazy? Not crazy enough to argue with you as long as you're holding that gun, Patsy, but... What's that? Oh, what do you think? Maybe it's the police. Either that or it's New Year's Eve. Doubt the lights off. Right. Okay, and now... That's much better. Why, you? He's got darkness, and I've got the you gun. Give it back to me. You're too impulsive for firearms, Mrs. McGarry. I'm keeping the gun. The cops! Sure, the cops. Your husband built a nice big house, but it's getting a bit overcrowded. If you don't mind the suggestion, I think we'd better scram just two feet ahead of me, Mrs. McGarry. Don't try anything funny. You Thank you. your pizza, sir. through the garden. The cops were all over the place, and after a while it was clear that our only hope was in separating. Patsy, Patsy, you go through the shrubbery, keep straight on down the field till you get to town. You can if you just keep going down the road. What about you? I'll make out all right. Yes, what about the heroine? Heroine? There isn't any heroine in this story, Mr. Getty. Just a hero. That's a joke, honey. You'll laugh at it later when you catch your plane to that car. <laughs> sugar, too, but my conscience is clear, all except for one thing, that, that little prayer rug is wrapped in. I know it didn't belong to me, but it looks very nice here in front of the tea table, don't you think so? Uh, will you have milk or lemon with your tea? And how much sugar? This is a very desperate brand, you know. A syndicate of desperate gangsters paid me $50,000 for only seven packages of the same quality. <laughs>
Joanna. <laughs> Hello, Harry, darling. Joanna, you beautiful, wonderful. What are you doing? Uh-uh. Let's not be tight now. I could ask you to go. Okay, then. Who am I you doing here? <laughs> Harry, darling. Three years haven't changed you a bit. Well, who is he? That one? No, no. Over there. Here, oh, no, it's all. Oh, he's really quite charming. Charming. He's an old. I like the way he laughs. Easy to join, darling. He thinks he's waitresses, he collects souvenirs, collects money, too. Yeah, I know him. You. <laughs> well, let's meet him. No, thank you. Oh, and, uh, George, you might tell your boss that Harry Lyon is on the preferred list. And several pleasant moments following Joanna's speech. She slipped away at your table from the table and did it to me to focus my attention. No. Mark, in this case, is fast and required to focus the boy. His contribution to the aroma of the cafe was generous with the guy, for inspiration. Then? Huh? Oh, hiya, baby. I was just going to send out a searching body for you. Very happy to meet you, Mr. Dorcas. Oh, sit down. Sit down. Any friend of Jonas is a friend of mine. Well, within reason, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very good. Uh, you from the States, too, Larry? Uh, Harry, sir. Harry, Larry. Huh? Oh, yeah, Harry. Yeah, what part of the States you from? I'm from Toledo. Toledo? Yeah. yeah. One of my plants in Toledo. A drink. Yeah, have a drink. Waiter, bring my friend a drink. Yeah. <laughs> Great little town. Yes, sir. Uh, to me, any town's a great town, as long as business is. That's right. You know, I'm, this is my first vacation in 18 years. 18 years. Can you imagine that? New gamble. First time we do is new gamble. Dawn is obviously used like my board and with my patients. It's all in the price of supporting that gamble. Well, I almost consider it a use in that price, and then I'm going to give it a cheap price. Sure is. Well, baby, come on, let's go out of this dump and find some souvenirs. Oh, Sam, not again. Now, what sort of souvenirs are you looking for, Mr. Dorkin? Hmm? Oh, I don't know. Souvenirs? Well, uh, souvenirs, ain't it? Now, come on, baby, go let Uh, souvenirs can be more than souvenirs, Mr. Dorkin. No, I'm what kind of dog is that? Now, now, look, Mr. Dorkin, you're a man of taste and means. Hey, a sales pitch. <laughs> hey, what are you selling, man? What are you selling? Uh, well, selling, I'm, I'm selling nothing. Nothing but plain, ordinary common sense. I've got a premium on this island. Yeah? Well, let me finish Let me tell you about Haiti, though. This island is cheap. Well, not our kind, not the late firm sort of thing. That of it here is a wild, untamed, primitive love, a sense of possession. It defies the laws of man and nature. Listen to those thoughts. They're telling you the secrets of hate. Huh? Did you understand the way? As much as any civilized man is permitted to. Well, that's that, that voodoo stuff, ain't it? When enough stuff for Those drums are calling to voodoo gods to smile upon the wedding of a native man and the lover. The wedding nights are just beginning. The sun is the dawn. The wedding of Fancy and Gregory. Who? Fancy works as a waiter in a hotel here in town. Father got in a jam once with a plant, and I just happened to say his neck. That counts as under him. Oh, that reminds me. you will excuse me. Hey, where are you going? I'm going to the wedding. Oh, up there? Oh, take it, please. Oh, I wish I could, Donna, but, well... Yeah, hey, hey, wait a minute, now. Sit down, sit down. Oh, what about all the uh, and souvenirs and all Well, all right. Look. Haiti is crawling with priceless relics. Anthropological prizes, uh, the symbols. It's a fantastic prices, man, in the human state. Oh, where do they sell them? They're not selling them. They've got another island. Another piece of the farming. Well, how come they're worth so much? Sandra and old man Sandra, the voodoo brands, and they used to take their sacred symbols with their lives. And of course, the raw materials. Huh? So those sentimental things of diamonds, rubies, sapphires, and the lady and ball the kind of things that we understand. Oh, I love these years, my friend. Oh, Well, okay, Lime. I guess you can get me one of them baubles. Yeah? Now, what's your deal? Well, first, let me find a suitable trinket. I'm enough then to buy it. So now, Mr. Cross is a small retainer with it. Huh? Oh, uh, yeah, well, uh, how much? Oh, as you wish. But, uh, those drums will tell you the sentiment to Mr. Cross. Thank I had a feeling that Dorna would keep Sam Cross well occupied with the present future, of course, I'd handle it my own way. In the meantime, nothing to worry about except keeping a date with two old friends. 
We don't think you'll ever come. Well, I wouldn't have missed it, Francie. You and Grigio are my favorite people. But thank you, not kind. You say that so often, Grigio. I'm not so angry. Yes, I wish you both much happier. And now, we will be happy always, and we have friends like Ari Lai. We have friends so much for us. Our family, we cannot forget. Thank you, man. You go far with a wife like this, she did all the right things. It is the time. Oh, the marriage ceremony? Oh, no, no, we are married already. It is the moment to pledge our prayer to the authority. Authority? It is a tribal custom. The sun is just... Please, Ari, do not try to fix it. Oh, you don't trust the old friend to see this. You can trust no one. Oh, What's that? It is the authority. The steps of the sacred steps of all the people. The steps of all the people. George Washington of Haiti. Oh, every stupid country's got its own Washington. Get me Washington, Captain, and I'm in. Listen, listen. Christo started life as a slave. He became hated as far as the world. At one point, he was being working. He stood off the combined armies of France and England with 2,000 men. You know what's going to be fine with those? Up here, the cops. Huh? The cops got the bad kid. Splendid fortress high on the hill. Oh, the jungle used to be there, didn't you? Oh, how could I miss it? It's big enough. One of the biggest. Washington didn't do that for us. So what? He didn't just order his build. He planned it, designed it, supervised the work, dug rocks out of the mountains with his bare hands. You're a self-made man, so I have to appeal to you. What about the text of man? Ari Kristoff is a landlocked king. He's an all-powerful earth god. While he lived, his scepter was a symbol of strength and wealth. Being king in those days was a profitable business, old man. Kristoff had more jewels than that scepter than Dorna has curved. The revolt here. Maybe the English was found dead, but the scepter was gone. For over a hundred years, its whereabouts have been kept secret. I know the secret, sir. Get it, sir. Yeah? He's my best. Well, they won't be committed. Worth my quiet. Okay, man. How much this time? Oh, plenty of it. Where are you? Oh, really? Where are you? Oh, you are welcome in the house of Fancy and Bridget. My friend, Ari, Ari, is Fancy, I've been looking for you. I've got a talk to you. Yeah, I'll be speaking to you. Fancy, that's just it. Oh. What's the matter? Are you kidding? You must not ask. You must speak to you. I've always considered myself one of your people, Bridget. My friend, Ari, I, I have told you too much already. Please do not speak any more of this after. It is forbidden to speak of it. Forbidden, my friend? I will be the sister. It is sacred. It is to us of the people. Is it? It seems to be the sister of all the sisters. It is passed down from high school to high school. It is never out of their hands. It is the authority. I think you must be lost to know. Please, ask no more. Grigri. Would I ask if it weren't important? No, Ari, please. I've got to know more about it, Grigri. Fancy, you understand, don't you? Grigri, no, don't let me say more, Ari. Please, don't let me say more. Please, please, please. Please, please, please. Yeah, come in. Fancy, come in, Lord. Do you not mind that I come now? Of course not, anybody. Really, so. I do not know. It is not my mm -hmm. When you are at my house today, I see you are great. I try to come with you, but you don't understand. Uh, wait, uh, wait a minute. I am sure that you are not have great trouble, or you would not ask for trouble. It is a nice habit. You are my friend. When you are in trouble, I have. Oh, good. That's the good, old man. You have done much for me and for me. This is the one. Oh? I 
for two months. Thank you. You will have no more trouble, Adam. Well, now, wait a minute, sir. What about you? How did you get this thing, anyway? This is no matter. You stole it from the high school. I think they find out your ticket. I won't go to the police. No. They won't put you in jail? No. Well, what will they do? They will not put me in jail. They will not go through the police. The police will be my judge. That's right. What will they do? They will punish me. I will die. Orson Wells returns in just a moment as the third man. Would you like me to put it on your bill, Monsieur? Certainly not, George. Certainly not. 
cause any undue strain or suffering to your employer. That means you. Never mind, old man. Here's the position. Oh, here, here's a little something for you. Thanks. You, Miss Yahoo, you wagon. Oh, yeah. What's the Excuse me, Mr. Hayes. I'm sorry. Huh? I'm sorry I must close the bar. Close the bar at this time of night? Just a minute. The drums, Miss Yahoo, you understand? The drums. The drums? Oh, sure. I don't know. Maybe those are the best drums. They mean someone's dead or dying. Or going to die. I don't know. Turn 
arrive in just a moment. Music by Anton Garrett. 
do an occasional stint for the A.B. Oh, that's right. I read your articles every week. I'm Terry Freeman of the Clarion. Glad to know you, sir. Well, this is my fiancée, Miss Pat Weston. Hello, Pat. Hello, Look, won't you sit down? Oh, thanks. Uh, this interview you have to do is sort of boiling your evening together, I understand. Oh, oh just a minute for things, sir. There's nothing you can do about it, understand. When do you have to turn your copy in? Ten o'clock tomorrow morning. Ten? Well, better than that, I'll deliver it personally to you at nine on the dot. Guaranteed. I can call it. So you two just walk to your movie. Write your story for you. Yes, but why should I be Why not? Many girlfriends to take up. Pretty poor news there, man. It won't help a colleague in a chance. Oh, it's kind of you, but uh, I couldn't be even posing it like that, Mr. Edgerton. Well, for the record, my friend's calling Paul. I assure you it's no imposition. Of course, if you're scared, I won't turn any story up to stand it. Oh, God, it is not that. Why, you couldn't write a bad story if you tried. But look, what did my editor say if he found out? No great telling. You, me, or Pat here. Well, there's another way out. No, sir. You go off to your interview, and I'll take Pat to the movie. Uh-uh. Thank you. I wouldn't stop even a newspaper man as far as that. Okay, then. The, uh, splendid, then. Uh, eight thirty. Yes. Uh, forget it, Terry, old man. I'm not doing you a good service. You're doing one for me. On the dot of eight thirty, I'm going to tell the sweet sea first floor of the first floor. I figured out a plan of campaign on the cells to sort of preliminary survey. Moved South America finally reduced the cells of our guys, invited me in, we drank each other's health, and then settled down to I am not very accustomed to be interviewed, said Gottfried. What is the procedure? Oh, it's easy. It's easy. I ask the questions and you answer. Yes, I will do my best. Well, now, your job is to work out the precise measurements, as I understand it, of the jewels that I said in the So you can make exact replicas to the museum. Is that right? Um, partly. But you understand it is much more than a method of mere measurement. Oh, yes, yes, I guess it must be. There is the color of the various jewels. Oh, yes. Yeah. And some of the settings are extremely intricate. Really Tell me, in your house, did you fix it to gain access to the jewels? It was necessary for me to make formal application to the Bokovinian royal coordinator. And you found them cooperative? Yes, well, naturally. One does not expect these savings for now. There will be a certain, how shall I put it, financial adjustment. Yes, I see. Well, how long do you figure the job will take you? I hope you have completed in a month. How long have you been on it now? Just two weeks. And three feet. What do you mean? Well, I just say there's an armed guard and so on. No, but of course, there is in it, of course. The Bohemian star alone is worth 500,000 pounds. Yes. Uh, who provides this guard? The insurance. There is a room at the safe deposit, and each morning the item I require is taken in there, and I work there. Under observation? Yes. There are two detectives who never take their eyes off me or my secretary. So you have a secretary? Yes, by the way, I'll be You should be here soon, but perhaps you will meet him. I have got it. Uh, tell me, Senor, could it be arranged for me to come along one day and watch you actually at work? I cannot say it to them. That's a much better story, you know. Better still. But it would be a metaphor of the book of Venian, of course. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll put in an application tomorrow. Will you support it? Naturally. Fine. Certainly. And now I guess... Now that must be my secretary now. I am here, Manuel. Oh, everything is fixed, Pedro. That's very obliging, gentlemen. Your mind can be fixed. Copy for you. I have it with you. Manuel. Tomorrow will try to return. I will distract the attention of the detectives, and you will remove the real jewel and the secret. Manuel, we have company. Talk oh, like that. This is a gentleman named Freeman, a reporter from the Evening Gladiator. Well, uh, thanks uh, very much for the interview. Yeah, now, if you don't mind, what I think I'll... What is your hurry? Well, uh, I uh, have to go on back to the office. You can wait in Oh, no, uh, thanks very much, sir. Uh, I think Sorry, you... I can't stay. Good idea. You do not think we could let you go, uh? Now, wait a minute. I'm so sorry, will you? Do you have some out? I'm too quiet. My intention is to see you do it. There are ways. Oh, how? 
course you chum. Have a good sleep. Well, you ought to know. <laughs> Been slumbering like an innocent babe, you have. How's your feet? I like some of the cats right here. There wouldn't be any coffee on that stove, would there? No. no. Well, I can fix you up with a nice cup of tea. The kitten will be boiling in a minute. Oh, that's fine. Say, what's your name? Charlie. I'm Harry. Pleased to meet Harry, I'm sure. Charlie, old man, where are we? That'd be telling. How'd I get in? <laughs> Sorry, chum. I ain't allowed to give no information. Fifth instruction. How's that tea coming along? Won't be off a tick now. <laughs> Sure. Senor. Senor. 
status quo. What more is there today? We made a mistake, Manuel and I. We admit. Considering I have the stone and this gun, that seems rather obvious, don't you think? What I mean is that we made a mistake when we met last night, not inviting you to join us in this enterprise. Uh, what gives you the idea that I might have joined you? You are Harry Lime, are you not? Correct me if I'm wrong, but surely our object in this case has been the same, to obtain the Bohemian Star. Our object, maybe, but not our purpose. You speak in the Oh, no, no. You stole this jewel for your own enrichment. I've taken it from you now. To return it to its rightful owner. Oh, you will pardon us if we smile. You don't believe me? Okay, sit down, gentlemen. I have a little telephoning to do. Hello? Operator, get me Whitehall. One, two, one, two. You do not mean that you are going to tell me. Hello? Hello, is that Scotland Yard? the idea? Well, who are you guys? I'm Detective Inspector Marsh, and this is my assistant, Gordon Anderson. Well, that's the fact. Do well, I know you two are on the level? Hmm? Oh. Here's my watch card. I know you. Even though I die, I sounded suspicious. You know, he might have been a couple of crooks, too. <laughs> of course, the point hasn't occurred to me. It's an hour thing. You have made a great mistake, Senor. Yeah, well, we'll pass that out of the yard later. Take him away, Sergeant. Yes. Well, I'm certainly glad you turned up and you did. I can't figure out how you got in so far. My ears don't miss much. I swear I never heard that front door open. Of course you didn't. We've been here all the time. Here, in this actual room. I know it's good. I'll be done. And what's all, we were friends of yours. You can come out now, Mr. Freeman. Hello, sir. I tell you. Get over it. Oh, it's all quite simply explained. When you didn't turn up this morning, I got a bit worried, so I phoned the AP. And they told me Paul Atkinson was in Malaya. Then I went round to the yard and gave the whole story to Inspector Marsh here. And you figure there must be some dirty work here? <laughs> well, it didn't seem that something odd was going on. It was doubly odd when I rang the Argentine embassy and they denied all knowledge about the and this. Mm. So the management let us in here while they were away. We were just about to announce ourselves and find out all the cost. The doorbell rang and you came in. So you figured you'd wait a while and see what happens, sir. <laughs> What is it? Just as well, I'm not a crook, isn't it? I mean, if I tried to get away with the Bohemian Star instead of pulling the yard, I'd have found myself in a lovely jam, wouldn't I? <laughs> yes, well, I can't pretend we didn't suspect you for a while, Mr. Lyme, but we know now that you're an honest man. Right. It's not everyone who risked his life the way you've done. Oh, that's, that's okay. Here, I guess you better take the stone, Inspector. I'll be glad to see the last of it. Oh, thanks. Of course you realize there'll be a reward. Oh, no, no, no. Please, please. Oh, my you. dear fellow, it's, it's just no more no, than you're entitled to. Don't you agree, Mr. Green? Oh, certainly. I'll see the matter taken up with the Bocanovian authorities, and you'll hear from them in due course. Well, if you insist, sir. After all, I was only doing my duty. Okay, I really didn't intend writing a story for you. I'm sorry I stepped up on it. <laughs> oh, you didn't get into too much trouble with your news editor. Well, there was a bit of a row, but that's fine. Oh, it will be. Wait till you see the story you've got through now. Tidy little reward, and secondly, my first came into that room. 
I just happened to notice the tip of what was unmistakably the shoe of a policeman sticking out of his foot. Now, you may think that knowing I wasn't alone with a couple of crooks, that the realization that Scotland Yard was tuned in on our conversation had something to do with my decision to, shall we say, play it straight. That's what you may think. In fact, you'd be silly not to. of the immortal character originally created in the motion picture The Third Man with zither music by Anton Kara.
And now, Orson Welles as Harry Lyons, the third man in Love Affair. <laughs> Oh, noble one, a moment of your time. Uh, I'm sorry, friend. I, I am not a beggar, oh, heaven-born. I am teller of fortune. Yes, but I'm... The past, what? the present, the future. I see all, yes. I tell all. Advanced, oh, sir. greatest of great lords, may your back never bend. Oh, thank you. May your beard never grow white. Oh, I'll try not to. Thank a you. A little yes. back sheesh, and I read uh, your fortune. Thanks very much, old man. I'm busy making my fortune. I don't need to have it told. Show me your palm, noble one. Let me but see the line of your desk. Okay, okay, friend. We'll make it stamp it. Oh, the hand of the wonder of the secret. It is difficult to tell your fortune, my lord, because you have no fortune. You have many fortunes. Well, that's nice to hear, old man. But let's get down to cases. When am I going to get rich? You will always be near to wealth and see many women. Oh, that's good. Beautiful women. Much well, better. Dark women. I like blonde, too. But only one wife. Also redhead. So what's that about a wife? Noble one, you will only be married once. Married once is too much. But it's mildly. I'm afraid you've got your fortunes mixed up. You will travel, great one, quickly and across many lands. And you travel with a wife. Okay, now you've had your fun. I'll say goodbye. Wait! Wait, you have not paid me. Why should I, friend? I'm Harry Lyons. You don't know about me. It's all a book, and nobody's going to write it without paying me royalties. So long, old man. Why? What are you doing, Becca Rada? Checking up on you. The same sweet, lovable girl, Why? There can be so. Almost anywhere, too. Time for Salat, no one to bother us. Go on. Go into this cafe here. Doesn't look very clean. Uh, it'll answer your needs, don't you think? You follow me? Oh, it doesn't seem to be anyone around. What do you want, Troy? What do I want? I want to know whether you have seen the way. That is what you are being paid. Isn't it? Not too well, sir. Quit toying with me, Harry. I'm not toying with you. What do you expect? Everything in the city moves by inches. I made friends. I'm real strong with Alice. I think I've got him to accept the thing. Actually, I'm sure he doesn't realize how important he's going to be in the I can't force him to sign the minutes, and can't work that way. No, no, no. We have perfect confidence. And well, why did you come here? To make sure that our confidence wasn't missing. Oh, I see. And you think you might be able to settle the matter of yours? I have an appointment with the Alison late this afternoon. He's out of his summer palace now. It's about 40 miles from the city. When I get back, he'll get in touch with you. He'll be at the Grand Hotel, I guess. I'll be gone by this afternoon, Harry, but I do have others there. I know it if you try to double cross. Your government will get the lease this way. How about the money? I brought you a draft to pay for your service today. Yeah. Well, thank you. Oh, that's good. Well, this hardly covers my hotel bill. I'm fair getting it. You're trying to... Your final payment will be waiting for you at the Bank International oh. when you have concluded. Yes, yes. No, I don't the bank know when I... They'll know, Harry. Who are you? My name would not mean anything to you, but I can tell you this. 
I am no friend of Carl Schweig. Oh, that's good. Any enemy of Carl Schweig is a friend of mine. What can I do for you? It is a matter of what I can do for you. To begin with, may I drive you back to your hospital? I, uh, have my own car. You do not own a car, Mr. Lyon, and the sick line you have sent it, you did not use today. You left it in the hotel garage to the service. You wanted him to be running order for your trip to be allowed to come to Paris later in the day. Mm-hmm. I'd be delighted to accept the risk factor for that trip to Paris. Yes, Mr. Yes. Gregory. The car is my own incidentally. There are some governments that are not as close as their first three as the employers of your Mr. Spike. Gregory, we will drive Mr. Lyon to the Grand Hotel. Do not hurry. Oh, man, you know all about my car, my engagement, this has no time for my business in Begorada. What more would you like to know? Just to keep a line, I do not seek anything. I wish to give you something here. You want to kidnap for this kind of money? Mr. Belang, we are both here in Begorada for the same thing. But there are some days to sit there. You want the oil leaf for the country, you give you that thing. I want the leaf for another thing. Mm-hmm, yes. Today, you have been successful, and I have not seen it. I have no sign of agreement, do you? Our father could stop to tell me that it has become a constant thing between you and the Alaskan. You have just tried to break charge. You will find the leaf is made out by you, whatever power you collect from the Alaskan. Maybe. I want you to make out the contract for me. Yes, that's what I want. 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 Yes, Oh, well, you're sure it's quite. Look at Harry Lyons. I know you. I know how your mind works. I have worked with men like you for years. You are lawyers who belong to the highest bidder. In your hands, you hold a large price in office for your credit. When you present the contract to the Alaska tomorrow, I am sure they will contain the name of the right country. <laughs>
stay with the real liquor. With all the luck she was pushed to the bank of my mind as I watched the summer palace out of another that afternoon. I rented Cisco on his day, and I said, I guess I wasn't watching the road too carefully because suddenly the ordinarily deserted strip of pavement became crowded and I had to pull to a stop. Arab driving burrows crowded about the car. There's some hatchback on foot climbing on the running board. In front of the car were three or four steady and pretty clear fifteen customers with old fashioned muskets flung over their shoulders. Hey, hey, what's all this about? I'm on my way to see your ruler. If I'm detained, you'll be very angry. I say, isn't there somebody here who speaks English? I speak English. Well, you, you're the chief seller from the bank of that, you know. That's one of my observations. Move over, Mr. Lamb. We have many things to talk about before we have a meeting. <laughs> returns in just a moment as the third man. as the third man continues with love of them. The beady-eyed, pockmarked Arab was sitting next to me on the front seat of my rented kitchen. The near equatorial afternoon was growing cold. The leather of the car's upholstery damp and crammed under my hand. I threw outside the car, proudly closed my name and seemed to just before the bulgy wall that rested my inside pocket. If you're thinking of reaching for a gun, Mr. Lyme, I might inform you that these two friends represent only a portion of Mr. Schweig's representatives in the curata. So you're Schweig's man in the bank? Precisely. Well, you can relax. I wasn't reaching for a gun. I have no need to relax, Mr. Lyme. Oh, dear, Chancellor. Oh, no, not at all. But perhaps your gesture towards your pocket was only to assure yourself that your wallet has been safe. What are you getting at? I saw you get into Mordecai's iron car outside the bank today. It would not be healthy to go against Mr. Schweig's wishes. No, oh, well, I have uh, <laughs> no intention of doing that. Oh. I thought the idea might have a Oh, no, no, no. If Monsieur Valley's offer was more interesting, don't try it, Mr. Lyme. Keep your promise to sign, and then get out of town before Valley knows you've completed our arrangements with Alapin. I'm not leaving town till I get the balance of the money Schweig owes me. He said he'd be waiting for me at the bank. And so it will be. And the bank will be closed by the time I leave the Alapin's palace. Well, you conclude the negotiations, and then meet me at the bar of the hotel. Okay. I will have the money waiting for you there. All right, old man. It's a deal. And don't try anything. If you do, I will know about it before you have finished counting the money. I knew you made a high potent day to pick the robbery, and I'm sure there was no deal of delay. However, that brandy of oil rights can be enough to make it stand up with maybe dancing and dancing and ritual to make it manage to leave a contract to home and get an exchange of half promise that he would. I wondered if Schweig's fascinating message was all I'd be content to be arranged with his statement. I think he's prepared, but I have been informed that the Alaskan did not sign the contract. Look, if you know they weren't signed, you also know I made them out the way you wanted them, in favor of the car Schweig and you represent. My job there is finished. Even if I wanted to stick in the garage until the old door gets around to signing, I couldn't. I was banning myself. I want the money. I've got to come to you. Now, do you understand? Now. I'm not sure Schweig would approve. You've got the money in your side pocket. I can see the bulge. Now, pull it out. Sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm not... I'm not... I'm not... I'm not... 
still went to the night and I started talking. I could hear him topple from his chair down and had a handful of thumbs burst into the room through the doorway. One of them had shot him. They fired after me as I squeaked out of the back door and I reached the rear when the drone jumped into the kitchen. Stepped Except when I shot in at the motor spot, I crashed the gears. The car leaped toward a narrow torture field and threw it over there. I really had to hear all the cars starting behind me. Natives and animals sprang out of my way as I careened down the winding street. The cars were further away now, but ahead of me I could see people milling about in a dimly lit cafe. There was a figure in point. But then I could see there was a girl. The American girl from the street. I was a pilot. I could not help out. Keep mine. Help me. Help me. Jump in. Get me away from here quickly. Hold on. Out of the way. Watch out. What were you doing, the native for you? couldn't take me where I wanted to go, and I wanted to see the places. The places you spoke about this afternoon. So uh, I slipped out of the hotel after dinner, and I went into that native cafe back there. A horrible place. Two natives came up to my table, and I started to sneak out, and they followed me. And I was never so happy to see anyone in my life. Yeah, that's right. That's right. But I can't call you 19 years old with an American girl. <laughs> yeah. My name's Marion Long. Oh, I'm an orphan. A distant relative of mine died a few months ago and left me with money. So I quit my job and decided to take a world series. Is it George Harris? No, I, I didn't take one of those planned cruises. I just happened to join the conductor tour to Decorado last weekend. I wish I'd never come there. You better send a wire to Harris, so you might notify your relative if you come in short like that. There was no one to notify. I had no relatives or friends over here. Mm -hmm. Have you passed over here? No, I, I haven't. Well, I know someone near the border who's very talented as an engraver. How we might operate a lot of trouble by having you make out your passport to a new name. Say, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Joe Smith, the Cleveland, Ohio, and I do for both of us. How's that sound to you? Sounds really exciting. Like you were spies or espionage agents or something. <laughs> Sometimes you can buy Parisian models almost anywhere in the world if you have the money. Do you think it's safe traveling by car? Don't you think maybe we'd better leave it and take a train home? I told you to get in the habit of calling me Joe. Oh, sorry. Why shouldn't I be safe? What are you hinting at? Well, nothing. It's just that you told me the car was rented, and I thought... Oh, stop thinking. Fine, man, old girl. No. Charges? We have no charges against you. It still isn't against the law to be a 
Well, if there are no charges against me, I... I've uh... just been hoping the Decorator authorities track down your sweet little bride. One, Mary? I'm sorry. The night you picked her up in Decorata, she was fleeing from the hotel, where she just shot and killed her aging husband. You ready to leave, Marion? Uh, yes. Just a minute, Marion. How long did you get this tree? It's no use talking to me. What he said. You mean, you mean that why you came away with me? You mean I was a sucker? You can use no, me. Okay, I've got a lot of things in my life that even been married now. I've even been a sucker. But that's one that doesn't go in the book. But George, I don't see how you traced it. There's a big bill your wife spent on the trip. You see, her joking husband, uh, not you, the one she killed, cashed a large check to Bank International a few hours before she did away with him. Luckily, the chief teller made a list of the serial numbers. Come on, Marion. Oh, well, goodbye, Lyme. By the way, where are you planning to be? Maybe it's just a trial. Well, you can always look for me, old man. There's no law against that. Tell you what, I'll give you a little hint. The Allison maybe hasn't signed that oil contract, and you need a little advice after all. She's probably finding Becerrado as well. There's a fortune teller I want to look up. I owe him some money. Come on, man. Goodbye, old man. May your beard never go white. May your shadow never go away. <laughs>
sitting at the captain's table? Yes, that's right. Well, I seem to remember that there's an empty chair at the table next to yours. You're not traveling alone. I, uh, it's a very important. You are on the holiday, Mr. Wright? On holiday? That's the manner of speaking, yes. Oh, I don't know, sir. So interested in my work, Lady Barbara, that I'm seldom able to keep from mixing better and this. You seem so young to be engaged in so complex a business. In this respect, mm. I always thought all bankers were in their 50s. Well, every banker must be able to inspire confidence in his clients, Lady Barbara. The incompetent banker relies on his appearance, maturity. And you? I rely on my record. <laughs> Lady Barbara calling us a bank account, the question of the empty chair next to it, the captain of the table, played a bit on my mind, so I looked at the question. Lady Barbara called us, this is A deck, two or something. George said it was Anne Companion. Anne Companion, but that's another husband to her. But the steward was busy. Uh, Stuart, you're in charge of the state on the line of Florida, aren't you? Yes, yes, that's our number. Lady Barbara's funny. I believe she only has one just died for her. You know, that's what she's done, traveling with a companion. She doesn't say who the companion might be. She's Joseph uh, Stewart. Yes, she has taken some trouble. Thank you. Now then, would you tell me who the companion is? No, she's not me, ship. But we'll let you all... Here, just a minute. Yes, we're all, old man. I said we'll send all the builders for a bit of information. The lady in question says she should be a double small box not to give out that information. Just a double small box? Right? Twenty dollars. I uh, know, yes, well, man. Now, that could this be a trouble. Thanks, now, then, about Lady Barbara. You were planning a little anky-panky, no doubt. 
Thank you, thank you. Worried, were you, sir, that the companion might be the husband of the lady in question? Mm, uh, yes, something like that, yes. Looking for a little ship called Romaine, no doubt, sir. Yes, that's it, now. Who's the companion? You've got clear sailing, sir. The companion's not the husband. Never a thank, sir. Uh, yes. Take my advice and wait for the companion's got her feet next, sir. A lot cheaper, the companion, than maybe Barbara, sir. Yes. So, in the next day or so, I found opportunities for smiling Lady Barbara around the boat, hot girls in the evening, drinking two after dinner, even a game of the deck tennis in the afternoon. Oh, she said, maybe she'd pick up my ears. She doubled my attention to her as a perspective of what's going to time. We were having brandy in the lounge. The other day, Mr. Lyon. Yes? Yeah? You were saying that what you relied on to inspire your clients to comfort you. Was my continuing success, yes, that's right. I must say, you inspired me. Well, that's half the battle, but that's what I mean. Have you some problem with your own business? Uh, to be frank, yes, I have, Mr. Lyon. Uh, we must talk of it further tomorrow. Why not now? Thank you. I should like to, but the truth is, I must say... Ah, you are companion. Next morning, I ran into their steward, and he told me that both ladies were out promenade. I thought, well, I was looking at them. Well, I was on holiday, but still, if I could turn my hands, it would be the business. I was, I was curious about this mysterious companion whose name was not carried on the passenger list. So I was on the promenade deck. I nearly bumped into them. Quickly, I ducked back behind a golf bed. As they passed. Lady Barbara. Oh, oh, good morning, Mr. Lyon. And this is the nice man I told you about. He's been so kind to me. Mr. Lyon, this is Miss Jones. How do you do, Mr. Lyon? I'm Miss Jones. Miss Jones? That's such an awful name. What a name it is. He makes nice people, Barbara. Don't you think it is? Now, that's your permission to join you? Oh, we'll stop joining you, Mr. Lyon. We'll go back. Well, then at least, Miss uh, uh, Jones. Maybe you will join me and Lady Barbara this evening before dinner. Mr. Lyon, I insist on the presence of buying me a cocktail this morning. Why, I should like that. It's only as a cocktail. The ship doctor told me that perhaps one thing I am strong, I should take something. First, I'll make sure that the boss is my feeling. And, uh, Oh, no, no, this is all right. Because the 
Yeah, uh, just hang on a second, will you? The lady's string of pearls broke it. Maybe there's one or two or still missing. Well, just some, I have a double sense of the big But they're so big. 65 and 5 feet. 60 and 1 feet. Three feet. Oh. Yes, I think the whole thing. Uh, lucky thing, ma'am. Anything at all. I say you're sure they're all here. Oh, yes, sure. Yes, then, will you, you have an envelope, perhaps, or a piece of it? Take him from me to the little shop. You know the one? I don't care. Oh, sure, sure. I know the shop. Yes, sir. Maybe it's still open. You can have the man with these things and pop it on a small loose thing. Or would you do that? Well, I'm not sure I like the idea, really, of wandering around the ship with a handful of loose pearls. It's much less the real thing. Oh, no, no. They will be perfectly safe. Now, won't you? Oh, you know, the delicious baby. If the truck should still be open, please. Leave you? Oh, I don't think you're quite quiet. You're speaking how lucky I am that you are with me in this thing, so you be back as soon as I can. Okay. Be back as soon as I can. <laughs> Orson Welles returns in just a moment as the third man. Harry, 
Oh, should I tell you something? Let me talk to you. Is the cat there looking at you? Yes. Don't you have to go right? I'll buy a kiss of I knew you were a princess, not your name. Oh, I'm telling you. Harriet. Oh, since you have gotten me started, since you have shown me so frustrated, I can see no way to find something in you anymore. I am Anne de Bourbon, Princess of Hildesheim. Just You have heard about Princess Alice? It is in Eastern Germany, beyond the Iron Curtain. I should say the world is no more. It's all gone except. Except what? I'm not sure. I will not know until I meet my husband in London. If I meet my husband. If? Well, is there some doubt? I have said too much already, Mr. Lyon. It is too bad. It has been a pleasant evening. I was almost able to speak. She was gone. Just like that. At least I knew now who she was. Whether I'd be able to find her again in London, whether I'd frighten her away, and with her, my chance with that string of pearls by letting her know that I knew she was a princess, all these things. I was a little nervous about that. next day, I guess I was getting ready to disembark myself, weren't I? Maybe Barbara came up to me. Mr. Lyons, here, yeah, I know. A note from... A reader, please. After that, I'd have been worried that uh, I could probably have said something. I've offended your friend, Miss uh, Jones. Okay, did I? Read the letter. The notepaper bore a curse upon this one sheet of heavy paper folded at once. There was no salutation in it said. As you said, it's not kind of a good It might be interesting and fun to experiment once more with your other statements. The one about a good thing. There's no signature. The man was next to you. Do you feel better? Uh, yes, that's She asked that. me to tell you that we will be stopping at the castle. We'll hope to see you there. So she had arranged that we should meet again, I suppose. And when we met again, away from the dangerous confines of an ocean liner, I proposed to relieve her lovely neck to see those lovely clothes. I'm sure I was on a holiday in Santa Monica and Robert. These were factors that had to be disregarded. My scheme was foolproof. As it turned out, the scheme wasn't needed. The first time I saw her, I was sitting in a thousand feet. Mr. Lyon. Oh. <laughs> all right, Harry. Harry, you have already done me one favor. I hate to ask you, I but... told you I'm at your service, Miss uh, Jones. No, no. Call me, Harry. If you want me, Highness, I should be... Oh, no, no. Tell me, Bob. But see that. You know the favor I have to ask of Harry anyway. I yes, started to say anything short of murder. No, it's not me. On shipboard, do you remember? I told you I was to meet my husband. Yes, you said. Yes, yes. This is the if. Years ago, Abby, when the Red Army was fighting for East Germany, she had to flee. My husband is what was valuable that we had. Jewels and gold plate, a pitiful collection, really. But all we had. He hid it himself. He alone knew where to He <laughs> It trusted in those days no one. Then, a few weeks ago, we found a very fast. It cost us a lot we knew. Bribes, the justice of a chain. Tea for the pirate. More bribes and always more bribes. Cloud to fly into Helvetstein. Don't you see himself? A mad and dangerous idea. But he refused to tell anyone else where his cachet was. He could not trust him. I went to America to pay some funds that was needed. They did Barbara has been good enough to lend us more. But just today, I have learned that even more is needed. More money? Say no, put me if you cannot do me the favor. You knew how much it cost to hide these officials over here. Oh, I bet. How much do you need? All you need is just a loan, mind you. Lady Bart was investing in doing all you need. That's the job for the next quarter, and then I'll send the pay you immediately. Please, how much do you need? Ten thousand. Another ten dollars. Is it too much? No, no, no. Security on your own, no fear. We will take you. My nice girl. You have already won a thousand and Oh, please, sir. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't dream of it. Let me see. Otherwise, I will not even ask you for the loan of the ten thousand dollars. Oh, well, if you insist. Now, how can we arrange to get the money? Oh, I have more than that here in the hotel space in American dollars. So just let me ring the desk.
trip down the stairs in the lift. Elevator to you. Back up again to my room and over to hers. I handed her ten bills. She handed me the third. We smiled. Shook hands on the deal. And I walked out of her room with a fortune in my pocket. Call for celebration. Tell my run with the car. Salute to you and run with my usual sort of message. And a uh, letter sent me there. Now it's all gone. It's gone. It's gone. It's going to boom all the news. I didn't need this. I went straight to him.
It seems that Miss uh, Jones found herself a legitimate person, one of those exiles because she couldn't settle down to the list. I ran into it at here a couple of seasons later. She was a real friend of mine. But it seems his kindness was as young as he was and probably never was, so the princess is very democratic. She asked me to that place for dinner, but she thought I'd be interested in some of the interior decorations. I was. She complimented me on my nice set of pearl studs, which she recognized, and showed me into the cloakroom, which was entirely wallpapered in American $10 bills for a reasonable facsimile. I recognized them. No hard feelings, you understand. It's a pleasant little paper, and I always enjoy moving about amongst the upper classes. It's so educational. Well, goodbye for now. Don't take any lead nickel. Remember, if you can't manage to resist temptation, be sure you get it afraid.
Orson Welles as Harry Lyons, the third man in Work of Art. I wasn't going to tell you, but the team, that young American boy, didn't get a chance to have to go on. I'm trying to give me a letter from the Juan Fernandez to tell me the handsome face and type of the man is, and no more. My informant had indicated to the senior might be helpful in guiding me along my shows and plans. So when I called the art gallery, housed in the ground screen building, the corporal, travel with the senior editor, he refused to see me. And all the other people who didn't come to the family are sitting at the land of help. And the bar at the top of the water seems an ideal place for a young man to start to do it. Bartender. Bartender. This is, 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 I beg pardon, I don't understand my Spanish. I would make you apologize if it would be so long. She was a fire run behind the bar, she would speak. Okay, okay, skip it, skip it. Well, young gentleman, tell you what is skip it. I need to let it go, never mind, there's no harm done, I'll have a scotch. Uh, uh, in uh, Buenos Aires, you uh, what's wrong, the speciality of the art. She's a drink I had made myself in there. Made from four different kinds of drugs. But she's the fine apple, I should have thought of her. Uh, drinking uh, with her. Fine, I'll have a scotch and soda. But you would like my speciality. In all the world, I see it is the fine. You make a mistake, you know, the Why? Mm. 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 I close in the stores of Buenos Aires as soon as possible. Emily Post. How do you do? My name is Teresa. Juan. And I do not make this suggestion for the sake of my ticket, Mr. Lyons. Only for the business people. I'm well, completely fascinated, Senor Fernandez. Please uh, continue. In our profession, we must dress with the multitude. We must drink as they drink, back to them. We must never call special attention to ourselves. But was seemingly melt into the back. Yeah, but I melt so badly. I'm serious. I tell you these things for your own good. Who this concerns me a little sudden, old man? This morning you wouldn't even see me. Your drink, Senor. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, you, Senor, I'll have one of your special, Berardo. I will be over the little table in the car. It was not judicious of you to come to my art gallery, Senor Lyme. You see, the business that goes on in the front rooms is quite regular. Uh, but there is a back room where some of the transactions are a little bit less often. Huh? Oh, yeah? My back room friends must not be seen to me to my establishment and my company. You do it. Well, of course, perfectly clear. Lyme, yeah, you come to Buenos Aires to reach some of the work here, huh? You are not the type to do anything. What is your right to do? I will make it. But we must remain casual acquaintances in this environment. Not business associates. You must not come to my gallery. Oh, okay, okay, all right. You are not giving me your full attention. Well, how could I, did you? See what came through that door? The beautiful senorita would be off the shoulder there. You don't yeah. miss anything either, do you? Not very much, I'm sure. Where well, should you know? If you and I come to terms tomorrow, she is the first. Fernandez is about as communicative as an angel. He declares that he's hoping to move the old man into the future of the world and to the battle of the future of the world and to the future of the world. Instead, he turned the conversation to other parts of the world. So it's more than human. The structure of the antecedent and all of the art of the present. The competition of the world is apparent in the proficiency of the latter. And what's the only proficiency of the former? So we turn to the general. I was never a second year in my little team of grand proficiency in my little table of grand afternoon. We met him with a student near the roadside of the session center, near the suburb of Bogan. It is my desire that we make friends among our new residents. We can gain invitations to that room to go to their private gallery. Hmm? There are many such private galleries. Well, that sounds interesting. I even get a job later as a tourist guide. Your job will be to guide some friends. You must keep them with full descriptions of the gallery, the houses, the things, the personnel, the emphasis, the effects. Okay, so, 
now with that first assignment you spoke about the senorita. Yes. Yeah. Little is known as Senorita Melissa Corleone. She came here a few months ago. She rented an expensive villa and she's invited only a few close friends to see her art treasure. And that's according to the talk, she's the only of the most valuable painting known of one of her. The original Rubens. Right. Mm. All that in original Rubens, too. Yeah. Well, come in and have a drink. 
the others are a little ahead of you already. Oh, we'll catch up where we're headed. Oh, I don't think I'll have a drink tonight. I don't want to stand dull in my country. An art collection. Very worthwhile thing. Very interesting, no? Oh. Somehow I didn't think you would be. Very, very, very. I'm just getting wrong in my estimate of you, Mr. Ryan. I'll be happy to show you my gallery. You really think you can show it? Oh, I'm not going to show it. Nothing. Thanks, Mr. Ryan. returns in just a moment as the third man. Oh, 
You were the one I had never seen from you, Captain. This is coffee, very good coffee. Who else is the handle? Well, that's what you meant. It's almost worth it. I was worried about him all right. But what's your game? It's all the very old one ensuring a fake for meeting someone to see this and giving him ample time to make a getaway and then suddenly discovering the last one reports in the city insurance. So now the insurance is said to be after me. And for a hundred dollar coffee. And she's in the clear. If I'm caught, she didn't bring it to the copy. If I make a getaway, she's rich. She's with all window dressing, her service, her house, you everything. Better me. Hey, boy, that's a lovely one. You even gave me the razor blade I used. Mm -hmm. And you and this new face. Yes. It came from a few hours. I told him. The Nathalie said it, it was in the first of the Ah, I'll find it. I know. I'm not the fellow now. It is a short of cash. With a hundred dollars for the roof and the coffee. Of course, I don't know what I can do with it. Uh, this keeper of the freight is a friend of mine. He will not charge you more than a uh, hundred dollars. Okay, well, goodbye, man. I suppose I just encountered one of them. Hazard is the first one. <laughs> Thanks for a hundred. Yeah, right. Yes, Senorita Corde, you can come out. I don't know how I can ever thank you. You were my only chance. I had to come to you, Senor Perende. It was a great pleasure to say that. Oh, that wasn't all you said. If I'd called the police last night, there would have been no way of explaining the presence of an attractive man in my home. One who'd been present all day. It would have been compromised. I never could have obtained my support. My only reason for being in Buenos Aires would have been shattered. My month for being rude to every man who looked at me. Yes, my husband's agent would be some such a person. You know, I'm beginning to think I would never cut off with it. Mm -hmm. You find that the truth is in it, right? I carry lime, I might have made a fortune out of this place. Imagine getting the bag for a hundred dollars. But with no profit. All I accomplished was the saving of a woman's reputation. I carry to you from the other day. Thank you. 
form you did not see. The three of which you think you took. And the four? One, Mr. Dudley, go into the moment. May I look at it, Mr. Dudley? The hammer. A hammer? A hammer? Yes, the hammer. Hey, you're not going to buy this music box that matches up, are you? Yes, you might. It's all right with me. I've never heard of such a thing. In 50 years' experience of selling antiques, I've never heard of such a thing. Well, why should you care? You can name your own price. Oh, my little master, that isn't that expensive. But really, I think it's a mistake. I don't like to see beautiful things willfully destroyed. I said you could name your own price, Mr. Dudley. Oh, in that case, I must warn you the price of this one. Excuse me. Forgive me, Mr. Chappie. Did he will? Is uh, this a habit of yours, breaking up music boxes? You don't know how many I've broken up in the last week. Mm -hmm. Here comes your hammer. Here you are, Mr. Chappie. Thank you. No good. And that will act at once in the will cost you exactly 35 pounds. It's okay, Mr. Dudley, but I'd like you to do one thing more for me, if you will. I'd like you to let me have the names and addresses of the people who bought those other three uh, music boxes. Uh, I'll pay a good price for that, too. Oh. Uh, Mr. Taxi. Don't bother. I thought he was going to refuse to give you those addresses. Well, he didn't, did he? Taxi. Well, he's trying out on a flag, sir. I know. He's waiting for me. Well, in that case, you can give me a list. I don't suppose for a minute we're going in the same direction. Just for your room. <laughs> in this girl was twofold. First of all, she definitely started with the petty girls left off, and second thing, this is the matter of the music doctor. My left little toe was twitching. So the damp weather was supposed to be me. It's usually a sign that money was in the air. Anyway, an hour later, we were on our fourth martini, and Myrna was beginning to unveil. Now, come on, Myrna. What is all this? What's the idea of busting up all those music boxes? Have you heard of Yan Chappick? You mean the checker for Rocky Girl, the politician? Yeah. What's he got to do with him? The day before he died, he wrote me a letter from London. Yeah, here you are. Here, you can read it. My dear man, you will not know me except that I've seen my picture in the paper many years ago, but then I was not surprised him. But I may know you from some more. The other day, I happened to see in an old issue of the American magazine Esquire a colored photograph of Myrna Chaffick. Could not the marking resemblance to your mother, my sister, who left for America some 25 years ago. Had you ever heard of this guy? Did your mother ever mention him? No, not that I remember. Well, how come he took your mother's name, not your father's? My father's name was Chaffick. He was a coal miner in Pennsylvania. It's funny thing, your mother marrying a man of the same name, wasn't it? Well, as a matter of fact, it wasn't. She was in Italian. And the man who wrote this letter wasn't your uncle? No, he couldn't have been it. You know, I'm talking to much. I don't know whether it's you or the martini. Both. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, read the rest of it. Mm -hmm. My dear niece, this is a painful task which I have before me, but really, there is no possible choice. You must know that in the communist who's control in my country, a price is put on my head, and I only managed to escape at the very last moment. I was concealing myself in the tail of an American airliner which was leaving Florence that night. Like many others in Europe in the start of last year, I managed only to take away with me the meager disposition. A small traveling case light enough for me to, to carry while I was ailing and feeble even then. I said that the purpose of this letter is a painful one. I didn't find it difficult after all you do not know me. I'm sure they won't receive the news of my death again in the past. But the fact is that I will be gone by the time you read these words, which are not intended so much for a farewell. People who don't know each other can't very well say goodbye to me. So the last will and testament. I'm leaving you the contents of my little suitcase, Myrna. A few shirts and neckties, and the unfinished manuscript of my last book. These you will not find very exciting, I'm afraid, and I can't imagine you traveling across the ocean to claim such an inheritance. But there is a music box here. The only thing of value I have to take away is my own flight. I want you to have it, and I give you my word that it will be worth your trouble to find. The landlady, who is not a sympathetic woman, has 
Nothing was left to give a secret, and unluckily she had not been paid for the rent. This attic room for several weeks had to come to to London. She would have sold it, and in the final fair answer him, Angie McCann. And now my hand is very tired, and I cannot go on pushing this panel for the paper for many more years. I send my blessing to the child of my sister, who has inherited her wonderful dream life. And also something else, I want to be wonderful. And I want to be I want to be Hmm. I want to be wonderful. I want to be doing it. It could be emerald. I'm sure that's what it is. And you think the emeralds are concealed in the music box? Huh? In a false bottom? No, I don't think it. I know it. And I'm going to get those emeralds if I have to break up every music box in the window. I'm starving to death. 
Well, it's a very lucky thing for you, Murder, my girl, that you brought me as a partner in this one. I hadn't noticed uh -huh. there wasn't much luck about the Sunset episode. We haven't got the boss. We soon will have the boss. How come? Because, my dear old girl, it so happens that just for kids. The blessing from the best can't work with me. The Count lived in what was once a big private house. It was turned into three or four flats. He was a garden in a big wood. That's how I got over the wall. The garden. I climbed up to the second floor and got through the window into the car's door. I worked quickly on the side there. I tried to fall. I got to know what it could for cabinet. I was lying in a cupboard that contained the car's object there. I got through to the latch. Oh, it was too easy to me. Oh, it's hard to me. Harry Lyme 
returns in just a moment. picture The Third Man, with to the music by Anton Carroll.
And now, Orson Welles as Harry Lyon, the third man in today's story, The Golden Fleet. It's a queer story. No matter how you look at it, it begins with a bullfight. It ends with a naval engagement on the China Sea. There's a woman in there. Have another drink? Well, I did too long. Uh, two gin things, boy. Yes, sir. Excuse me. They all started in the little seaport of Alger Spirit. Like every other town in Spain, it's a bullring. I don't know how you feel about bullfights, but it's Sunday, I say. It's a little hard to stay away from them. A bullfight is to Spain what an opera is to Italy. It's the only thing I've come to the start in a time. I've been dawdling over my shellfish and beer, so I got into the second plane. So that Ito was in the ring. He was younger then and braver than he is now, but I've never been one of his fans in the valley then. I love bullfighting. I won't go into that. I've thought about the Corrida all night, but I promised you a story about adventure on the high seas. Beginning right now. So that Ito is dedicating the bull. He is saying it. To the lady who was seated next to me. The first time I glanced at her, the glance freezes into a still eye. The very dark red hair, very full of ivory skin, and very bright yellow eyes. I mean, who are you? I won't dwell on that flight suit I wore. Suffice to say that this kid could stop traffic on the Indianapolis speedway. The bull had turned, shot with his hat to him, the fact that the jet showed on his shoulder, moved out of the sun and toward the bull. And as far as I'm concerned, the bull thing is over. You must watch the rain, Mr. Hmm? May I beg your pardon? It is very pleasant to see your eyes on me. I adore being stared at, but uh, just now, don't you think it's a bit disrespectful to our friend, Senorita? He's no friend of mine. He's a good friend of yours, Senorita. Permit me to inform you that he is my enemy. Oh, I didn't hear it. I do not think it would be good for you. I adore it. You're fighting over you for pleasure. When do I begin? Whenever you like. Who shall I take on? The man or the bull? I think you need not have so that it was about to make the kill. That was a beautiful kill, wasn't it? Just, uh, what is your name? Lyon, Harry Lyon, yes? Good joke. I will call you Harry. The bull need like a pin from it. The beast seemed to be asking for I was part mm, should have been the other way around. You are already jealous. I adore that. <laughs> Still, you must admit it was a glorious thing. Yeah, Tell me, Harry, what are you doing in that place? No, I'm just looking around. What are you looking for? I don't need to look any longer. I found it. You make very stupid. What did you do for this? Oh, well, export, the green export. I dabble in a lot of it. What? Why? I had allowed myself to hope to work. Well, I have been, Taylor. Will that help? You have to have glass of paper. I'm here in my yacht, perhaps you have seen it in the Oh, that big three master with a black hole? It's mine. We've lost it. Oh? It happened quite suddenly. I'm very sorry. I would like to see you in this Did you believe it? I was a sister. I do not. But I have master's papers. Oh, in Barcelona. Oh, that is a bore, because we are leaving tomorrow. Okay, I'll have somebody bring him down by train tonight. In other words, you want to come? In other words, I... Right. Okay. I needed that job, you know. And of course, she did. I don't think she didn't like me, but there wasn't any doubt of it. Don't see you now. I was afraid of it. I phoned a friend of mine, a forger from Barcelona, and made arrangements to pick up some papers from him up and down the night to the coast. Then I changed them to my best shirt, the other one, and went to the best restaurant. She told me she was going out to the boat. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. I, I'm sorry, but I just realized something. I don't know your name. You do not know the lady's name. You know, so Of course she knows me. Old Spain knows me. 
But what is this man doing at our table? He doesn't know you. That's all right, old man. You can fix that. Introduce us. I'm going to go to the next one. Let's see what's going on. Okay, my dear. Unless you come to work, I have to do the deck in my apartment. So I'm a short trip from Alexandria to Naples, but I needed that job there. And for one more thing, a huge. You like the ship, honey? Yeah, but she's a beauty. The steward will take your luggage to your cabin. And right now, you'll be needed on deck to superintend our departure. And by the way, where are we going? To China. <laughs> I'll just hear it, Spain, to Hong Kong, China. That's quite a run for an old salt. His only experience as a navigator consisted of piloting a canoe around the shallow end of Lake Winnebago with Duncan. Luckily, I thought Spring Long would have helped. The health name of all things in the world was Sidney Carson. He was an ex-smuggler, rather an unemployed smuggler. I'd run into Sidney occasionally on various little papers in and around the Mediterranean. I figured he was trusted enough so I could trust him. His main attraction, besides the shock of dirty, carrot-colored hair and a glass eye, was a set of teeth like a rotten rake. Sidney was the only man I ever knew who could eat a tomato to a zipper. But if Sidney was an eyesore, he was a gift from heaven as far as Captain Lyme was concerned. He was a real sailor, remember, and he covered up for me doing all the real work while I walked around in a blue jacket with a gold button sign looking for him. Actually, Sidney wasn't doing this for love. But since I didn't have any money, I found it necessary to make him a few minutes. I came with Sidney, this isn't a yard. Of course, it's a yard. This is a nation trip, pure and I told you what kind of concept of the man and all simple stuff. Kind of concept. Nobody smuggles dope in the China. We're going off around the world just for the fun of it, and that ain't any fun. Sydney the truth when I claim this was not a pleasure to you. It was a pleasure, believe me. Mm -hmm. 
when I finally got to my own cabin, I was gone. Didn't dare go looking for Sydney and Leo. Didn't I? Didn't get to sleep tomorrow morning. Yeah. Yes, what is it? It's Matthew, sir. What do you want? Don't bother me. Ask Sydney. He knows it's of course. Just a moment as the third man. Von Kenningfaust, the lady's husband. I'm coming that way. Uh, just a second, I think. Okay. Well, it was Lady March. I learned how to imitate a sea captain by then, but I was more than a little anxious about my papers. It's been a nasty moment or two in Tahiti, and I was afraid the British authorities might spot the forgery and might even have got some wireless messages. I feel it's more the purpose of the trip. Sydney hasn't gotten around to telling me about that, but Dr. Ben Warren. Where is that you think? Yeah, can't be the pilot who already taken him on. Yeah, good. We are? Where are we going, honey? Okay, now, I guess you have answered my question. We've been riding up rivers from Hong Kong for a good half hour. But for now, we took it into a beautiful hand. I'm taking you to meet a very important man. You better know his name. A Chinaman? Yes, a Chinaman. General Wade was governor of one of the largest southern provinces of the state. Where are we meeting him? I think the mainland is too hot for him now. The general will be waiting for us in the house. Of what? The time is good. I hope you're hungry because they're bound to fight. You mean to say we've come halfway around the world to keep a dinner engagement with a Chinese warlord? I'll just be a little serious. And the 
Oh, he's all very nice and noble, but what about me? He knows about the gold, Nadia, and I prefer to keep that as my own. He also knows about something else. What do you mean? There's a tiny glass window here by my hand. Captain explained it to me. I have them. The sign says for nothing to all of you. Remember what you said, right? This is a ship. It's a bomb. Thanks, Nadia. God bless you. Look, that man! He has no time. He's a good swimmer, too. Goodbye, Harry. Harry, I'm sorry. 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 I'm Thank you. 
representing Orson Welles as the third man. The Lives of Harry Lyons. The fabulous stories of the immortal character originally created in the motion picture The Third Man, with Zither music by Anton Kara. Now here's a little anecdote taking place in the city of Bordeaux. It has to do with a phase of my hectic career, which was almost exclusively a chase. I was a big boy by then. There's a school teacher in the story, all the same. His name is Professor Saint Pierre. Oh, Brown, you hear me? 
And they should Are you here? No. Just a couple of laughs. Basically, they you live up to the third loop. Easy. Easy, if you're any key. Come up here. What is he doing? Rouse in here. A little accident. But how is he doing? Oh, the sky light. You want to see for the glass? Yes, yes, I'll save the glass. Dead? No, he's not dead, only red. Right. We have to go off to do something. What happened to the man who just left here? Uh, we, the little one. Yes, yeah, he's coming back in a few minutes, and we're not to let him in here, do you understand? We must do, I am. Look. If he tries to come up again, I will crack a bottle over his head. Vivi, <laughs> I adore you. Well, now tell me what this is all about. Did anyone follow you? Yes, but I lost them six blocks away. I was afraid of the street, so I had to you go. I had to hide somewhere, so you I picked, came here. You picked a fine time. What happened? Did you get into another fight? I told you, old man, any more brawling, and our deal is off. This time it was no fight. Sarah knows about that. Sarah? How could he know? Talk, you fool. Talk. Please, would you do not check me? My age. It will be worse off if you don't tell me. How do you know about that note? Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. I passed 45,000 franc notes myself. We have so many. Oh, no. Please. It's that little Marianne. She said wanted me to buy her. Here, yeah, I gave you orders that none of that money is to be used in France. But I am to carry that much money around the lot to be able to use just a little. I never thought. Listen, today the shopkeeper turned in an alarm, and before I knew it, I am being shamed. Listen, old man, another stunt like this, and the police won't have to take you. Now get out. I'll tell you what I want. You go over and wash the blood off. Bella, the only man I really was scared of in the whole city of Bordeaux, Bella, the young, dynamic, coming from the police. He had a reputation for tenacity and integrity, which made jobs like mine very far from easy. You see, I was in competition with the French government. We were both printing money. I was selling my currency to sailors and traders on the way to French West Africa, which had to protection and much less. In a few days, I had an appointment with a trader on his way down there, which promised to be my biggest deal. But how much did this man, Bella, know? I want to find out. I can't understand how Bill like you can say, but it's amazing. Why, with your looks and intelligence and personality, you should be on the stage. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Look, I will tell you one thing, Alice. If I were on the stage, I would be better than she ever was. I never thought of it, but you hear her talk sometimes, you would think she was brighter than Yvonne Saint-Ange. Eh? Who's this? Oh, my mistress. Madame Sophie Barras. Is she an actress? Yes, she was before she married Mr. Barras. She went by the name of Sophie Avant, but if you ask me... How long have you worked for Madame Barras? Only since she was married two months ago. Only two months ago, and she's still a bride. Well, not a very after all. Sometimes I do see something like a secret time. Well, tell me what, Sarah. Does he beat her? No, he does nothing. All the time, it is work, work, work. I guess what she said to him last night. I told him as I was feeling the table. Like ever, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, darling. We never go anywhere together. After the time, we don't even dine together. Is this the way you treat your bride? Sometimes I'm not even sure of a good luck. Yeah, not so feel this. He's not fair. Could I have married you if I did not love you? You see, you are raising your voice and you are raising But I am only trying. I am only trying to tell you that I must have loved you or I would not. Ah, how are you speaking the past? This means you no longer love me. Oh, but I do, I do, my little one.
reached the other side of the park. Yeah, I called taxi, taxi. A long black car around the corner. I ran up to run again. I ran up the steps of a large building. I realized it was a public library. I decided to seek refuge there, but the weight I was carrying made me trip. I'm one of those stone steps, and I lost my balance in a few cases I'm flying. Skin, my knee, and my arms and my hands were all bruised. An old man insisted on helping me in my feet. Puffing over me, a few cases rolled on the steps, rolled on the shape, but I couldn't wait for anything on the mind of the moment to escape. I made an aversion to the French jail, and I ran up to the big brass doors at the top of the steps. Just as I reached the entrance, the uniformed guard was stretching a metal grill work across it. He was most polite. Sorry, Mr. Joseph, but I don't know how to open the stairs. You have to wait until tomorrow. I ran down the steps again. A cold sweat. I heard into the street, heard the shriek of brakes, and saw the park in the narrowing this by a truck. I hurried on, ran smack into the arms of a traffic policeman. The gendarme held my arm firmly and stopped the truck to ball out the driver. What's the matter with you? Didn't you see this man? Who oh, almost killed him? Officer, it's fine, right. 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 Officer, it's fine,
presenting Orson Welles as the third man. In the lives of Harry Lodge, and the fabulous stories of the immortal character originally created in the motion picture The Third Man, with the Zipper Music by Anton Terra.
Maybe you'll find nothing there. But it's a wonderful picture. Why don't you have a frame? Sure it is. Well, maybe I could get one for you. Why not? I know I get abused. I don't think I'm going to you in the station. Still, we don't have to settle that now, do we? Right now, all I'd like to do is have you all agree to be my guest on the tour of the city tomorrow. I like that first And one other thing, with your permission, I'm Helen, stand it for I'd like to put Helen to the tour of the city here right now. I'm going to put
the river to find into the hands of the parents, and before we had an act up together, I had some facts that could sustain my blessing, and the worst thing I didn't know about was just in two states. Well, I put him on a boat, and I took him to the Americans. Before we arrived, I had great friends of mine ready to hijack this two states as soon as they got it to the section. Everything was working to death. The best of all, popular world. The next morning, quite early, I went to the room in the chair. trying to rouse my friend. But it's true. That's only serious. Nonsense. The boat is saying yes. No, monsieur. They have left that few cups of smoke. See? I showed you. Bacon. Oui, they have got. I stood there in the doorway looking into the room vacated by my earth for a friend. In my mind's ear, I heard the voice of talking. My principal was released at the mouth and began to tell him. They met me, all right. They met me, Prophet was going to do, and took me. Perhaps Prophet knew me well and told him that I liked the pretty face. Now they were gone, and so was my opium. And so was my $50,000. I advanced into that room. But, monsieur, you have no right to me yet. Yeah, does this give me the right? Oh, thank you, monsieur, thank you. Can I help you in any way, Yeah, I'm looking for something. Mm-hmm. And for what? I don't know. Clues. Here is a picture on the floor, monsieur. Oh, that was Jack. I don't know if it's him or I'm not sure. Huh, monsieur? I never mind. What's it? What? The best brother of that man is writing on a paper of his blood, and he bought on her. He can make it out. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm off. Mais, monsieur! Ces Américains. We're ready for sure. I'll stay in the short and quiet. To be quiet, we're going to be suspicious. The street is all vacant lots and dilapidated frame houses in need of paint. Number 22, you say. The house is stupid, and the house is being made to use it. I'm only watching it, I'm not a bit better than the court, you know. I don't know. Hello, Papa. This gun has real bullets in it. I'm coming in. Come in, yes. Okay, where are they? These are your holy prisoners. Papa's not come to take them out. Where's that girl? Where are they? In the room. Okay, lead on. Papa. Open the door. Hey. Hello, darling. Hello, mother and father. Now, wait a minute. We'll make a deal with you. Well, there's the opium right on the table, doing a frame. Well, thank you, one and all. Oh, now, wait a minute. There's a man coming to pick up that opium and give us the money for it. And he's already made it. And we'll not keep all his money. Okay, where's the guy? Yes, we'll accept the end. We all have to send it to you. Look at that, Alain. It's a good deal for you, honey. Yeah, it sounds like a good deal. Uh, for me. What do you mean? Hold the door to the next room, Ellis. That's fine. It'd be nice to tie you people up in here. Oh, no! You don't realize it! Ryan, you're not serious! Oh, Harry, please! Uh, it's no use to argue with Harry, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, all of you, in here. All right, now all of you set to work tearing down these drapes. Come on, hop to it. Helen. You're going to tie them up. 
How'd you like to come with me? Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're innocent in the scene, you'll be more innocent looking than you. Maybe you're not full of excellent ideas to make you eat your innocent appearance than I. What do you say? All right, Harry, it's a deal. Oh, it's a dirty little frog. Shut up. Shut up. Oh, come on, tell him up the dragon. All right, darling. What? Discovering that you're not a little maiden from young town, I can like you just as much this way or more, but it's fine not pretending. Oh, you pretend as well. Not after all well of you. Mm, what is it? A woman can have all the wickedness and all the terrible precocious knowledge of the street urchin. And still she remains a woman. Do I love you? Yes. I love you. I love you. I never thought about it. I could have left you in that room with the other of us and taken all the money for myself, but I love you. Oh, I'm glad you have that thought. Well, I am a woman, yeah. Come on. 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 Come there will be no waiting. You know you are both here. They've been watching there. They've all forgot the man who was here with the mask. <laughs> now there, gentlemen, there is a clever girl. You hear her? You're making it sound as though I was one of them. <laughs> what are you saying? Oh, well, you saw me with a gun trained on her. I made her open the door and I was going to take the messenger. I realized, of course, that you, the policeman, had already taken it. I, I made this girl confess to me where the opium was hidden. He's lying. He's not me, sir. He's been making love to me. I want it both now. <laughs> you won't get it from her, Jack. He said he loved me. He said we were to be married. Gentlemen, this is the most wicked liar. In the back room, you will find the rest of the gang. Tied up as I tied them myself. And he's the first to show these people. He's gone everywhere on the continent. He won't be sent to the door to the door. Is that a lie, young lady? No, it's true. Mr. If your story is true, France will be most great. Oh, it's fine, sir. You find the gang back there. Jack, you stay here with these people. I myself will go and see. Uh, oh, by the way, Captain. Yes? Just in case you're wondering about my angle in this, I believe your so gracious country offers a reward in cases like this. That's true. I do hope you'll be able to put it through to me quite speedily, Captain. I really shouldn't stay in my stay much longer. I will do my best, Mr. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You are so beautiful and I don't think you will see get out of whatever my deal without this race to all of the time you ever any of my people to the other time to to you. About ten years, I should think. So long, you know. Now, by the way, there's a postscript 
for that story. I told you once before I don't approve of both, and you may have thought from this little adventure that I won against my country this year. Really, you should be better by now. Harry Lyme will be a trifle underweight on some of the virtues, but such a funny principle. And I warn you, watch out. But believe it's what got the ghost. But even for having arrived at that rather dramatic moment, I'll let you in on a secret. I'd already come to a decision. I was going to claim that police reward anyway. I know an influence by reading about the size of the reward, not the most size of the risk. You know, what they're doing. They pay to be honest. What was the truth of even Harry Lyme may not be incorruptible. You see what I mean? Orson Welles as the third man. The Lives of Harry Lyme. The fabulous stories of the immortal character, originally created in the motion picture The Third Man, with zither music by Anton Garrett. the shot that killed Harry Lyon. He died in a two up in each the end. As those of you know who saw the movie for third man. He had a fact at the end of Harry Lyon. But we went to the beginning. Harry Lyon had many lives. Like in his time earlier. How do I know? Mean? This one? Because my name is there. I don't approve of gambling. At least not the legitimate kind. It's not so much the gambling I dislike. It's the losing I detest. Of course, all business entails a certain amount of risk. That's why insurance companies grow risk. I believe in insurance. That's why when I have to gamble, I always like to ensure that I'm on a sure thing. And some people have been rude enough to call this cheating, but they were prejudiced by being on the losing side. At the time, an extra city that I brought up that I like to call my Mexican hospital.
now Orson Welles as Harry Lyons, the third man in Mexican hat trick. There is no human affliction worse than poverty. In Mexico City, I realized again that it's more painful than a disease occurs in the midst of plenty. Somehow, there had always been enough to buy a drink for some poor, unsuspecting police. You know, the kind too much money in his pocket, too much trust in his heart for fellow American and meal tickets for Harry Lyons. But now, nothing. Harry Lyons, soldier of many fortunes, good and bad, is down to his last borrowed cigarette. Sitting in a crummy dive in a fourth rate district of city, checking a mental rock to a friend, contact, and local trouble. You're Harry. Oh. oh, hello, Diego. Just thinking about you, Diego. Sit down, old man. What's your standard rate for six fast lessons and pocket picking? I trade you favor for this, huh? Well, of course, King of the Mexico City dip. Hmm? How's he doing? He died this morning and had Oh, it's too bad. Is there anything I can do? Before he died, Bola asked me to remove a great thing from the remote day. Don't say. He was to do the the next world. Uh, look, Diego, you've come to the wrong man. I'm having trouble enough with this world. Bola gave me this note. He asked me to take it for him to... To the police. Well, go to it, old man. I'm... But the police could you not believe that this man? Me? To the police? Diego. Remember, Bolo has entrusted it to you. Be a man. <laughs> Face the issue. Straighten up. Shoulders back. Chest I out, old man. Not death from me, Gordon. You could remove Bolo's pain. He's not guilty. Oh, all right. Let me see this note. Hmm. I don't know why you should be so worried about Huh? Oh, uh... Uh, well, well, Diego, you've done a favor too for me. I, uh, I guess I'll take care of all of them. Oh, for you. You can take it to the police. Eh? Uh, don't worry about a thing, old man. Uh, I'll take care of them. All. When I managed to get rid of the grateful Diego, I sat down at Kennedy for my one chance. Seventeen years ago, when I was playing in the Mexican town of Leon, Bolo Manuel spoke children. I was a professional, complete account of how he committed an innocent man. Somebody named his fancy Boero, the accused of his murder, explained to Bolo a written signed affidavit proving Coelho's innocence somewhere in Leon. The square in Leon, and the to say, he was the emphasis of professional court It seemed to me that the Coelho family might have a greater concern, so I decided to investigate the financial aspects of the family interest. Buenos dias, senora. Buenos dias, senora. Senora Coelho? My daughter, I do. Uh, senora, this document concerns your husband, uh, Vicente Coelho. He was your husband. Yes. Yes, but he came to his death. And he was there for a moment. How long has he been? He's been with the rules. Not for certain. It has been a long time. Yes, you need to be delicate on my account, senora. I know. No? Well, I know that your father was accused of murdering Leon 17 years ago. He didn't know. He changed his name. I know. He was not a criminal. The police didn't share that view. When they escaped from prison for his crime, it seems to change the case against him. Yes? Yes, the authorities didn't know it, but it's guilty. But he had to escape. There was no hope without the police. Yes. You seem to know so much, Mr. Brown. I know what you know, senor. Those papers are the evidence that could have saved your father if they were stolen. This does not help us. Or everything else, some kind of evidence that we can see of the name of my husband. We have spent thousands of days. What have you found that evidence now? Oh, dear. If we only knew. Senora, Senorita, those papers, they were affidavits proving absolutely that your husband is nowhere near the scene of the crime. They were? How do you know this? I have the word of the man who stole them. The person? And this? He knows very good now, Mr. Lyons. They must see him immediately. Why do you come to us now? What is always so familiar? I have a confession that he is the most. I can prove your father's name. You can? No, no, you hear I knew that someday Margaret is here. We must go to the police. Yes. You can tell me. I'm afraid not to prove. You won't go? Well, it's just that confession. I'm afraid it isn't enough. Well, what? The affidavit. I know where they can be found, but it's the approximate location. Yes. After 17 years? They still exist. If you're searching, I can produce it. Then you must get them. 
nothing I'd rather do more. I'd like very much just to secure the your name, but well, I, I, I can't even need it. It takes time, six months or so, and then yes, a year. Depends on this. I do have to Six months? Six months? Yes, No, you must help us now. Mama, please. We do not want you to lose anything for our sake. If you can talk, we will pay you what money you would lose. Oh, I'm grateful to know that you're here. My income is not small, something around 100,000 pesos for six months. We will give you 200,000 pesos. Our money is here. We will pay anything. You will not be paid. It is all right. I will stand. How do you ever find me here? It was not his suit. You have never known it. No? Checking up on him? You might say this way. You do, Mr. Lani. My mother thought it better. Please, Senorita. I need to make some apologies. Mr. Lani, forgive me for saying this, but before a man with business affairs such as you, and it's so... So, uh, how did you? See it. How did you? I hope you find the way over there. Fifteen cents was tried to the record of the Bad looks there, no one. There you had your share. Uh, not together now, and that's really important. Yes, to talk to my father, it's not a good story. No, thank you. Did you have to go again? Harry. See, Harry, I... Say, you know what I think? Father, 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 father. Harry, I would like to go to Leon with you. I have the car. You will need an interpreter, I've been Well, I've heard it's a lonely time. Yes, Harry. Well, I don't just stand there with me. Going home and back. No need to, senor. My luggage is downstairs in the car. We got our first glimpse of Leon. Quite incapable of coping with giddy girls and such as that. As we entered Leon, I wondered what Merton had to do with the first time. Bueno, you have taken us directly to the town plaza. Couldn't miss, the only one road into town. Is a hotel over there? It is the hotel. Mm -hmm. And uh, that must be the town's official greeter. Out you go. Out you go. Gracias. Mm. Good, just French. He says he will watch the car, Harry. Official greeter, all right. One or a hundred in every Mexican town. His mother is in. His family is dying of hunger. Give him something, Harry. Looks like the greeter was just sent into retirement. Buenos dias, senor. We follow the official for the hotel manager from the trial line. And many centuries before this, my hotel was the home of one of the Spanish conquistadors. Those are our rooms down there. You see, there is much romance Very in the city again. Oh, over there you see. Uh, senor, what bell is that this year? Bell? Oh, the bell, this is, uh, this is the famous church bell of Leon. Famous? It's very long and tragic story, senorita. Every hour it calls to remind us of the scene. Look, old man, some other time if you don't find it. Si, senor, pero... Ah, there you are. Now then, young lady, what do you say we wash up first and start the big search for the affidavit? Harry, it seems so difficult. Where does one begin? Well, the follow, of course, by his trail.
Orson Welles returns in just a moment as the third man. I'm a little tired of asking. Uh, do you speak English? Uh, that's well. I want some information. Information. Cockfight rings with Yehos on the street. There's the one in every place where there might be a clue. I'm just pointing in the direction of the rapid Did you find anything, Harry? Not so much. Perhaps you're making a mistake. What about my father? Hmm? It would be easier to find someone who remembers him. You can start from there. Part of your mind mentioning your father's name just mentioned around here. And well, not only the police down on us, we have every chief confident man in Mexico on us. To find out what we want. But we have to start somewhere. And we have to rest somewhere, too. Might be to kill him. Let's go back to the store. it is not right for me to do it. Oh, no. But it is not. Oh, we're both tired. We've got to rest. We might as well talk we're doing. Go on. I'll order up a couple of drinks. Thank you. 
Presenting Orson Welles as the third man. The Lives of Harry Lyme. The fabulous stories of the immortal character originally created in the motion picture The Third Man. With zither music by Anton Kara. Thank you. Well, you understand. 
the one beautiful thing in my life. But you I'm are a dealer. You must have to go back to work on your uh, work. Let, let me think about it. There's no hurry after all. But we must have Let's it. have lunch tomorrow. We'll decide then. Hmm? If you do decide, how much do you want for it? Never sell it under four million francs. Four million? Too much money for you and too hard for me to part with it, so we'll just remain friends, shall we? I, I do not care how much money. I must buy. We'll meet tomorrow at the usual place for lunch and talk it over. In the meantime, you think about it, and I'll think about it. All right, Harry. One thirty tomorrow. Good. I'll be there. <laughs> going to give me half out of sheer generosity? Uh, no, not out of generosity. You can help me. Besides, you have some money coming here. I'm going to get it, too. A uh, very rich Brazilian. Tomorrow, I'll ask you to get the deal. I want you to be a friend of mine. I see. I don't know anything about something. Uh, the deal? How do I know you're telling me the truth? Uh, I'm afraid you just can't take any word I'll prove it to you. So tomorrow at noon, I'll phone the women. Then I'll the hotel, yes. I'll wait. I'll be asking for three million out of the four. Yeah, good idea. How about a drink, Paul? No. I hate to go on my rest. I can't just recall them. Yes, you are. Oh, no, 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 no
Did you come too, Mr. Bessie? Oh, with pleasure, mademoiselle. Uh, where should we meet? Should we go to my favorite restaurant, the uh, uh, Tour d'Azon? I know where it is. Oh, it's one of the best in Paris. Now, I must go. I uh, got on addition. I'm quite pleased to open this door. My only regret is this, that I have to leave Paris. I have to leave Aurora. One real problem, get rid of Bezzi. He stuck close to me. I just wait till he is. I'm going back to the hotel with you. Oh, okay. Yeah. I won't. Might be better if you went home and pack and then have to leave first in a hurry. I am staying with you until after dinner. You're a very suspicious fellow, Paul. I trust you as far as I can move the Eiffel Tower. You don't have to trust me. We're all meeting for dinner. I sure does run the rest of the run away, can If you double cross me. It's impossible, Paul. All you have to do is show up to the rest Thank you for picking up the little one. We'll sit down together. All right. All right. But okay. if you try to do any tricks, Harry, I'll oh. swear I'll hunt you down and I'll kill you. Now, I mean it. No. I know you're a very sincere fellow. Meet me at five o'clock. <laughs> returns in just a moment as the third man. Oh, you're being quite a you never had money in the bank in your life. 
we will. This one then. Oh, I am sorry. I am late. I just couldn't get away. Oh, Mr. Burger, this is a heavy lie. Yeah, how do you do? I am pleased to meet you. Mr. Borger is an expert on Renoir painting. He's from the Louvre Museum. Oh, the Louvre? Now, if you'll just excuse me for a minute, I'll... I have to leave. I'll just take it. Of course, sir. Please sit down. I'll unwrap it. I began to figure the distance to the door. The places had been out of time to run and fight another day. Day, motion to jump down, made evidently a company and pretended to close the door. Uh, and to bear that, and to drop it out, and I could slowly unroll the picture and held it to the band. How much did you agree to pay this man, uh, mademoiselle? Five million francs, monsieur. Is it too much? Too much or not enough? I don't like your tone. What do you mean by that, sir? The light in here is too dim for me to make a difference in the but uh, you think it is a real I was sure it was all right. I would like to take it with me and examine it more thoroughly, but I can see this. If it is a Renoir, it is worth 20 million francs. 20 million! Je suis arrivé. Tu vois ce que tu dis là? Yeah, better do as he says. Look dangerous. Pictures worth 20 million, eh? I'll take it from you. Now stay as you are or you'll get a bullet. And don't follow me. Okay, I can't grab the picture of the ramp. Talk about it, please. The gendarme, the girls, and the I ran after him. Stop, thief! Stop, thief, thief! All the time blessing myself for not having tied him as securely as I thought I had. All I had to do was to follow him away and then get lost. As I swirl along his wake, I noticed a couple of speed in, huddled around a small fire. They scattered in panic. I sprinted, tackled. He hit the sidewalk. The picture flew out of his hand. I shoved it into the fire. I've got you, your rope. Now I'll teach you to steal deep. I'm afraid all you will do for a while, but I stress for that deal, my friend. Stay him away. Well, no, no, I see you I have a few suggestions to make you more on the way. I want to fly. You have a family captain. Yes. You are so brave, so wonderful. Oh, you are a wonderful actor, Mr. Lyme, and a hoity. Uh, but, uh, but where is the picture? The picture must be right here. Two are in his hand when I can't it. Oh, oh. oh, the picture! 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 The but then I saw the girl from the man who made me go to the Royal and I wasn't just in the room until I could be so close. There is only one thing remaining to say, Mr. Black. Yes, what is that? I do not want you to think that I am such a bad expert that I really had any doubt about it. You mean that it was an original? No, I mean that it was not. I see. How much do you want for this? Nothing. Nothing? I don't, I don't get it. Would you lie? If I had ever the one arrested who tried to sell a fake picture, the prison of Paris would be free. I wanted only to give you a chance to get away without embarrassment. I hope this will be a lesson to you and that you won't try it again. Sure about that. I can't tell you how much I appreciate your service to you, Mr. Fellow. I can tell you, uh, you know what an inspiration. Harry Lyme returns in just a moment.
Let's face it, son. The world is very generously popular. Orson Welles as the third man. The Lives of Harry Lyons. The fabulous stories of the immortal character originally created in the motion picture The Third Man. With zither music by Anton Kara.
Lang, the third man in, in pursuit of a goat. Well, you made an agreement. 
Keresztül, ami jó a bajhoz, a Kivos Finance Hospital Revolution, my compatriot, Yes, I knew all about that. I was to handle the fighting, he was to take care of the finances, the procurement of guns in the ministry. And he was part of the year of the bank, he fell over this morning, he had disappeared. So he is in Havana. Well, that's what I heard, but I... You will go to Havana and bring it back. You will need money in your pocket, of course. That is why we have given you part of what little we have left. You will not take losses. You will be watched by an every moment. If you make one false move, you will be able to go uh, look, I think I ought to tell you something. I'm impressed with him. I don't know. I don't even know what he looks like. He's a big joke. <laughs> Your life is very funny. Uh, I'm not being funny. I never heard of this guy until this morning. Talking, I met in a bar for a while. The bartender remembers the little cafe was talking to the bird. He said, the roost is painted on the wall. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, that was the name. Just ask the bartender. Well, I could prove our family. I will make sure that it is quiet about the imaginary part. But you can actually have to do it on the family. You're not making things easier for yourself when you're not in your face. You check up on my story, right? That's it. Oh, I will save my breath in your mind. Well, then we'll drive you back to your hotel down so you can get the rest. You win. Right up. 
continues with In Pursuit of a Goat.
with this one, John. Hi there. Yeah? Oh, oh I thought for a minute there I recognize you. Uh, maybe I've seen you someplace. You happen to be from New York. So, uh, can't you see I'm busy with a lady? Funny you sound like a New Yorker. Okay, so I'm a New Yorker. That's correct. Anything you say, El Zorro. Huh? Where'd you get that name? Well, you talk about where I got it. It's really, really friendly. Okay, it is good. Only this thing's a place. I'll get rid of the tape and he can uh, leave me alone. Where you stop, Captain? Go back there and go to your room. I'll call you in an hour or so. Do I ask you? Hey, Lock. You wait for your phone. Where, where do you think uh, you want to head? Uh, 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 
I guess I better do that for you, Scott. Yeah, that's a good idea. Well, this is my boat. We're pulling alongside it now. Climb up, old man. Okay. Now just swing yourself over there. That's the boy.
Presenting Orson Welles as the third man. The lives of Harry Lyons. The fabulous stories of the immortal character originally created in the motion picture The Third Man. With Zither music by Anton Kara. If I were an honest man, which would be silly in the face of it, this would be my service. Any character who gets swindled is asking for it. You can't swindle a man unless he's full of lies and it's very greedy in this book. This to a man of my town would be just a decision. If I didn't know that nine people out of ten are full of lies, like a certain American named Harris, who not so long ago came to Paris for a holiday. Strictly in Mr. Harris's honor, I concocted a juicy little swindle called Fortune. Club where one may play steps on all places. It's turf club. Is it English? Oh, sure. Turf club, eh? Ah, fellow's name is Harry Lyon. Here, look at this. It's got some sort of pulse out there. And two race tickets. And look, look at this newspaper thing. From an American newspaper? I think so. Mysterious race track thunder, Harry Lyon, Belmont, Confusion, estimated at more than one million dollars. You sit around at the desk and see if there is anybody here in the hotel whose name is, uh, what is it again? Uh, yes, what do you want? Are you Mr. Airline? You're a newspaper manager. I don't want to see you. No interview. You will not be bothered by a lot of... One moment, sir, please. 
There's the cashier's window. Yeah. Uh, do you think we should make the bet now? Or the odds right. Or well, over there. See? Or oh, oh, well, I guess uh, yeah. you got that blank check. Right here. Oh, oh, there's no blank anymore. Oh, come on. Let's get up that window. Oh, the odds on Don Street are right. Oh, sure, 41. Sure, sure. Come on. Hurry up, gentlemen. I don't feel right. That bet is down. All right. That's right. That's right. I want to place this on Dunsing Cloud in the Fort at Champigny. I'd give them to my car. I'd like to see your car. Oh, fine, thanks. Dunsing Cloud in the Fort at Champigny. Check for 15 million pints and 600,000 cashes. For one day, then. Right, yes. For one day. Yes, your ticket, sir. 15 million, 600,000 pints on Dunsing Cloud. Thank you. Next, please. Now, fair enough, dear. One million pints across the border. Come on, Jack. Let's get up and hear that call. Uh, my name on that check. Why, why? How can you know? Why, everybody I hear was sitting on the machine. Relax, Janet, relax. He's a bear. You hear him? He did not even mention dancing Cloud. Oh. Well, I guess they don't want to make it look too raw, you know. Why well, did I put my name on that check? Fifteen million francs. Oh, you'll be all right. Look at the way all these men around us are taking it. Oh, well, their money is on the machine. See, there.
Harrison Cash will be catering the state. I trust you should. He's kept on ice. Twenty-eight thousand dollars is worth all the time and effort. Two days, three days, four days. Johnny and Harrison and I walk the public road together, Johnny and Harrison. We get to the top. I look up from decoding a cablegram which was handed to me as I left the hotel. Hmm. Milder man. The third race at Chantier today. Three to one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, monsieur. Uh, one moment, please. Uh, one thing, gentlemen. You remember Jaline and Monsieur Ray here? Oh, I'm afraid I... That bet for 50 million. We held up our check on Oh, yes, yes, indeed. Just for that don't get to a cash. I assume you have the money with you? Right here, yes, sir. Fine, fine. Just throw the ticket and the money to the cashier. And Come on, Shannon, cash that check to ticket. Now, just be at the odds on now, and that's three to one. I'll take my share of that, though, that's three to one. Yes, that is, please. My receipt for the United Cruising just to show it to you. Oh, yes, Mr. Janine, is it not? You have the 15 million in cash, right here. Yeah. The odds are three to one, all right. Fine. Money, please. Now, then, that's 78 million francs, right? <laughs> yes, right, I believe. And these packages are 10 million apiece. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's 70 million. And uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think that's right. Count it, please. But why don't you place it on Maldonado? The second race is up. I think I watched the market. That's a good idea. Put it all on Maldonado to win. Seventy-eight million on Maldonado to win. And here's your ticket, sir. Eight and a half million dollars. Well, gentlemen, a cooling drink while we wait. Did you place the money, Daddy? Yes, I did. I hope nothing goes wrong. Here's the ticket line. Good one, man. You bet this horse to win? I said, place. That's all the run. Uh, I say, manager, can we, can we exchange this ticket from a win ticket to a place ticket? Oh, no, 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 really, sir. But it's very important. I, I beg of you, please. I know you're really ridiculous. You're ready to go anywhere. But it was a mistake, monsieur. I assure you that it was my intention that the wager should be for place, not win. I am sorry. Nothing can be done after the master has told me. Janine was a loop. 
Yeah? My sweet, my lovely, my dove, my pigeon. Where's the dough? Hey, the fixed defense cop, they uh, raided your club right after you left. No, you're kidding. Oh, you guys are gonna leave their hands on the rest of the and their phone, their name, the whole crowd. You'll see here until all I deserve. How much did you get? Oh, the original steak having and the small cup. How much? Stop it. Two, two, five, four, five, six, seven, seven, Thank you. 
I have in my hand here a farthing. This is the smallest of small coins. In England, which is where they come from, a farthing won't buy you the second section of day before yesterday's newspaper. In fact, you could hardly describe a farthing as money at all. Once upon a time, however, there was a farthing that was worth 20,000 pounds. It happened this way. In the eye of a girl, a beautiful, mad, beautiful lady fortune. So I'm fairly in the terms of lady and I. I know her by her maiden name, Miss Fortune. I lost you with a particular farthing I was talking about. I haven't forgiven her yet. So I think it's good to stick around if you're interested. I'll tell you about it. I'll do the work for you. I don't know. 
suit yourself. I have another deal. I don't know whether Bill would like it. He's in jail. Can't do anything. I'm out here free of the bird. We're talking to the most experienced and clever man in the business. Yes or no? Okay, now brief me on this farthing kick. Yes, I'm going to take electric to the farthing. Here's a photo Dear Helen, here are three farthings which I promised sweet little Daphne. Please tell Uncle Ned to write me. I love you and wait eagerly for you to visit me, love Bill. Dear. Yesterday I wrote a new arrangement for the orchestra. We played some of Beethoven's piano pieces. No need to be done. Where are the three fathers? No need to Where are the two? Maybe work when he's thrown the purse with all the coins. It's a trace of the hook. I thought they might be in the till or someone's pocket, you know, good money. Yeah. But did you get any of the fathers back? No. What about the other part of the letter about Beethoven's orchestra? Yeah. Where's the maid live? I don't know. She doesn't live at the address she gave me. I traced her to the house. The bartender knows her. Her name's Lily. The coins are probably a clue to where the money's hidden. She only sent you two or three coins. That's what she sent to her. Helen, I'll be back in a few hours. Just one more thing. What happened to his partner? Johnny back. Yes. Yeah. He's been here a couple of times threatening me, wanting to know where the money's from. Well, that's good. I don't know why he's eating. Poor Bill isn't going to let him know. He sure isn't. They hate each other. That foot is a dusty double cup. Sure, I uh, can't be sure. Where are you going? Well, I've just developed a new copy of that copy. The wonderful big word for it. Numismatic. He's a collector of coins. I'm going out collecting coins. See you soon. Before I went to look up Lily and the seething maid, I thought it was pretty. Now, I have an instinctive dislike for this barbaric social institution, but there's no two business. If they didn't know me in Liverpool, I would have any children. You say you're from the Overland Bank Insurance. Yes, Governor. I wonder if I may see Mr. Barrett. Why? We insure the bank for robberies, you know, and this is too formal question for our record. Sorry, but I, I don't need to talk. Well, I've been an investigator for many years. It's the first time I've ever, ever been denied. You are not being denied communication with the prisoner. Well, I don't understand. You'll understand all right, Mr. Lyme, when I tell you William Barrett is his chief. Just about an hour ago. Well, well I must say this is a rather slipshod way of running a penal. Who is Harris? You heard? Bartender will tell you where to reach me. I found it for to recover the bank money long before then. My arithmetic, one quarter of 20,000 is uh, 20,000. I went back to the pub and spoke to the bar there. Ten pound notes with my friends for life. Couldn't have been telling me. Give him a good long breath here. Yeah, Give him a good long breath here. Give him a good long breath here. He was quite a wench. Right and blind. Very fast. Didn't look a bit like a house. The room was richly furnished, and she was dressed in an extremely elegant red silk robe. There must be a mistake. You are Lily Jobson? Uh, that's my name. You work for a Mrs. Barrett? Mrs. Barrett? Uh, that's what I said. Oh, uh, yes. She's someone I met. You were her housemaid? Yes. How do you manage to keep up a place like this, the salary of a housemaid? A friend's apartment. Don't you mean John Baxter? I have nothing to do with the robbery, believe. He sent you to work for Mrs. Barrett. You read the letter and stole the farthing. Give me your handbag. There's nothing in Give there. Give it to me. Ah, over here. Lipstick, compact, that's it. Farthing. Where's the other? Mrs. Barrett, Mr. Lipstick, the other. Really? You don't think you're very much good. I'll let you go, Lily. I'll just talk to you in a week. I hurried out to the fire and went up to the lake. I went out to the fire and went up to the lake. I went out to the fire and went up to the lake. I went out to the fire and went up to the lake.
was being hailed. Tony Cohen had caught a quick flash of two men. I picked his two of them in a garbage can. And I tried to make a run for it. No good fucking way. All right, Lyme, give it up. All right. What's up, boys? Where's the bottle? I threw it away. You threw it away, eh? All right. Now, where is it? Well, you fellas can be arrested for the salt. Empty your pocket. Oh, okay. See? What the hate is? Half crown and a shilling. Hiding it. Let's take him in this hallway where we can trust him. No, no, wait a minute. Just a minute, please. Just a minute, nothing. Give my place to the black guy, sir. We can walk him. But, but now. Orson Wells returns in just a moment as the third man.
Stop here, driver. Okay. Okay, Alan. Here you are. Yeah, I know. I'd rather walk up to a tree. Yeah. The darker the better. Look, if you want to go home, Helen, after all, you've had a very tough day. I'll take my time. You don't trust me, huh? I didn't mean you. I'm afraid that wouldn't be such a very, very good idea. <laughs> Helen, how do you say that? I like you from the first. I'm helpless, you know. I'm just traveling to get you out of the wife of a murdered prisoner. Bang. He'd get discouraged and give up. He didn't. 
I let go and smashed him on the jaw. His body relaxed for a minute. I seized the gun and jabbed it into his head. Like a good sport, he gave up the struggle. Turn the light on, Helen. Now, it's your turn to stand against the wall. You too, Lily. Keep your hands up and maybe I won't. Whose house is this? He was a composer, just like Bill. One whole wall was completely covered with gifts for me to get. And I thought this was a the letter. The letter was really a few jobs. It was part of the two He mentioned something about Beethoven piano pieces. And then it took this is another piano piece called Fury over a lost part. That's where it was. And then he disappeared. What? Who lost part? Then another thing hit me. The police. Again, the police. I was too late. The shot to the right in the hood, actually. And it burned the car. See ya. Boy, Mr. Lyme. Get aboard. Yes, sir. If ever you sit foot in England, Mr. Lyme, we'll throw you in prison on the car. Well, I shall make every effort, sir, to have my good name cleared. In the meantime, you're being deported. I help capture a notorious criminal. This is my reward. It just goes to prove what I've always said. Franklin was wrong. What, Franklin? Well, one of my countrymen officers, first name is Ben. He used to say that honesty is the best policy. Well, if it pleases you to joke. It doesn't please me, officer, and believe me, I'm not laughing. Not a father's word. Goodbye now. You hear from me, officer. I'll send you a postcard. <laughs> returns in just a moment.
Presenting Orson Welles as the third man. The Lives of Harry Lyon. The fabulous stories of the immortal character, originally created in the motion picture The Third Man, with silver music by Anton Zarek. Thank you. 
I represent the biggest Swedish manufacturers of ball bearings. Tomorrow I'm going to start them. Is this so uh, funny? By way of the public? Uh, you mean you know? It's very English when you say everyone knows everything about everybody and no one knows everything about everybody. It's just a little bit of a pride and it's a piece of a little bit. Well, I'll answer that one. I guess I'd tell you in full. Uh, you like it, Ian Wilson? Or am I breaking the rules again? I have my work. And of course, I must have asked you what the work is. You know, I remember when you were talking about the work. I remember when you were talking about the work. I tried to avoid the cops with five different questions. You went there with six people. Oh, yeah. What are we allowed to talk about now? Well, what? What's the joke? You are terrible. I think you're going to have a bad I'm not going to be people, but I know what you're talking about. Don't worry. Is that a joke? Is that a joke? Is that a joke? Is that a joke? Why did they go? They did go to the hospital. Oh, they're traveling. Yeah, they're I don't know about a woman called Sue Mary. Well, she's still in the neighborhood. I don't know. I've seen her once in the ten years since I've been in the room. I hear she's still there. I'll give you the address of the man who wants to I'll drive it over to your place. That's the address. 
There's a new nightclub outside the pin. The drink? You get around, don't you? What's the plan of the drink? Yes, leave it in the parking lot about midnight tomorrow. Uh, give the key to the dorm. And then what? I'll have a table reserved just inside. If you don't like what I tell you, you can take back the key. Otherwise, I'd drive home in the new cabin. Okay. The next day, I bought the car. That night, I left it in the parking lot where it came. I got a nice big car on. Place, isn't it? Yes, I'm better than that flea bag of yours. What are you drinking? Make mine a double scotch. Oh, there, that's half the soap. Let's get down to you know? She's in She can keep moving on. You know what's a snatch? You might think she's in a He's doing a holder. Come on, good definition. Mr. Cotton, 
Good evening, sir. I just organized it. Right. Oh, it is our pleasure, Mr. Carpenter. The German Reich is particularly interested in the development of industry. Oh, yes, indeed. Uh, I would like to put a few questions to privacy, Mr. Carpenter. Won't well, you please uh, step this way? Well, Mr. Ambassador. I won't keep you long if you will just step into the elevator. All right. Wait 
Sometimes I think this isn't a war at all, but a grand convention of lunatic. I didn't say that, did I, Corporal? No, sir, you didn't. I didn't think I did. Here you are. This is from the British with their compliments. Thank you, sir. It's an effect. We hope you might have lost it. Oh, it's that Taylor and Sarah Rose. Yeah. They want you to return the seat. <laughs>
sooner or later, I knew, one would make a billiard shot that would knock me into a side pocket. But finally, fire and flat it. Sally! Sally! You said you thought that was a lie, too. After what the police told about you, what else could I think? But if you are not lying about your life. Valerie, no, I wasn't. Then take his wife and house. Help us defend the house. <laughs> what is your fun? You're asking me to prove my love by getting myself killed. Okay, I'm going to give it a gun. If I'm taking a lie, I'm, I'm finished anyway. We picked our way through the darkened room. The car was coming over to a party. Big Sudanese lay half couched with that in the brazier. He whirled at the end of it. No, no, I'll give up. Better point that rifle the other way, lad. I'm on your side. Valerie. Are you two all your left? No, my grandfather is on the other window on the other side of the house. It is easy. It's easy. I'm on the roof, laying the darkness by the long road. I'm trying to look at it. 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 I'm trying Good time, Mr. 
was a matter of the The boat must have been. I told you that no, he might have been dying one day. Now, I know. I'll send you for a price. Right. Set down the Hilderos and myself free in Algiers. That's not much bad. No. If this is not one of your little tricks, no trick. I will set you both free after we find the treasure. Not the point. Okay, you do. This is the man. Followed the book and both times later that day. The sky grew gray and dust devil began to be dispersed. Old Bedlam remained his valley on the beach. I let him swim out of grace and rock and grace and white in the air. The flashlight beams danced about the time of the top of the book. The valley got a good point. Here's one chest, Mario, filled to the top. Look. Look, look it's gold dust. I wonder if it's right with it. It left here to escape the tax collector. Gold, bands of gold. Oh, this is a fun stuff. Wine, Mario. Look, sacramental wine and steel fragments. Wine taken off the galley. This is over 400 years ago. Well, Mario, I've kept my word, haven't I? Do you think I should get a small chair?
don't want to work for your living, don't bother about that expression. The Third Man, with Zither music by Anton Kara. The world, the poet says, is so full of a number of things he shows to all the apparently things. Luckily, the world is full of just a number of other things. He's also pretty generous to those who suffer. What my children is a sucker. A sucker is a large man of chuck who likes to gamble, as long as it's a sure thing. I need to tell you that the first thing in the world is the sure thing that you do. A little closer, friend. You're proud of your face. Let's go. Don't worry, Harry. 
I'll have him in Havana with his 30,000 on a plate inside of 48 hours. Okay, okay, we're waiting for Well, try and get a seat. Plain, don't forget to meet me in Havana. Not very long. On the day, Herring's in line, the wall beats them. On an American business man like Stan Pierce, who's on a Florida vacation, I find myself sitting on a plane up to a pretty girl. He makes my work pretty simple for me. I know she'd be able to take it up easily. She's telling him a story I told her during the next night the Florida nightclub. By that time, he was ready to leave anything she told him. Oh, Ken, I'd love to, but you don't know my boss. I've got to fly to Cuba first thing tomorrow morning to give him a contract and send me to New York for it. If I'm not there, I'm out. Please, I'm not a bad guy. I'd like to go up here. Mr. Jay Harrington Line is a sinker, especially through a secretary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I should have heard of it. Only if you're working Wall Street. That's what I want to do. The only thing I want to do is make some money before I do. Figure a way to do it. I'm not sure that I, I'm being still at all. Oh, I started to think I shouldn't tell you about it, but I don't know why I shouldn't. You don't know Mr. Lyme after all. I don't want to see him anyway. Besides, very nice. I like to be You heard it. Well, you see, Mr. Lyon's a great sportsman. Loves to gamble, from the fights, the races, almost anything. <laughs> Matter of fact, me too. Well, anyway, so Mr. Lyon took his big palace to a place in Cuba near the bank. Link Lyon swimming to tennis courts, the wood. And right on his estate, he found that one of the workmen at Cuban is a wonderful boss. Mm. Okay. His name is Pancho Cadobo. He's really good. I don't know much about boxing, but the trainer Mr. Lyon brought down and, and the doctor and everybody, they, they all say Pancho will be a world champion. Mm -hmm. It would be funny if you had heard of him. He's had ten fights, won every one by a knock. But then just the Lyon just keeps him under wraps. All his fights were held in secret. Mm -hmm. So that when Mr. Lyon matches him in New York, he'll be absolutely unknown. He's trying to get him matched up against the top boys, and whoever it is Poncho fights, Mr. Lyon will be able to get some wonderful odds. See? You know, but I don't see how you figure to make any money out of it. Are you going uh, to... Let me tell you. You speak to Now, Mr. Lyon always tries to get his guests to bet against him. He takes Poncho, and he'll get big odds. He's so sure of Poncho. Poncho has agreed with me that he'll lose this next fight if I give him the word. He'll... What's his second? Or a prize. Mr. Lyon's been giving him a purse of 5000 every time he wins. We agreed I give him twice that if he loses. Mm, Mr. Lyon, you give good odds on the I mean, the strike price here is a 10 to 1. Yeah, I think so. Isn't it awful? <laughs> That's all. It's a smart thing for girls to have thought of. Well, even with all my savings, I, I couldn't win enough to pay off that. Besides, mm, I... You've got to have some of your better income. Exactly. Well, I guess I just have to stick to my job for a while longer. Let's just see if I offer to put up some of the cabinet for No. Have you got that kind of money? Oh, sure a thing like this. <laughs> I sure have. Oh, it's Dan. Look, I'll give you all my savings right now. Wait, wait a minute. A thousand dollars. If you can only help me out. Oh, all right. <laughs> Sure, brother. This will have a drink on the show to celebrate our partnership. Dan, you're a one. And you sure you'll be able to raise the cash for that? On this kind of a proposition? I have about $30,000 cash at least. Oh, Dan, how wonderful. <laughs> how wonderful, yes, indeed. Better for me, Mary Lyon. I always try to discuss him to relieve the risk of his money as much as any deal from the other hand. Jenny had done well. She got the same deal with the Cuba. She had a $48 stock. She had a $48 stock. She had a $48 stock. Well, either you're an uncommonly lucky Vizion expert on stock fights. Good luck, Mr. Lyon. Uh-huh. Matter of fact, this is the first time I ever saw the bird fight in my life. Okay, that's it. That's the best $5 you want to get. There you are. Uh, what was your name again? Uh, Pierce. Dan Pierce. I'm the insurance. Uh, 
Pierce, you like boxing? Yeah, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Uh, what do you think, Mr. Pierce? Yeah, it's a national thing. Uh, well, well, good night. Good night, Pierce. Maybe I will undertake to win that $55 back to the deal. Oh, that's a nice to handle a chump with artistic appreciation. Then as an country state expensive for me, well, I regard them as legitimate business deductions. I wanted to make sure this chump here was impressed. I even had a half dozen pals on that all dressed up to nice and then be my weekend guest. Charming people, all of them really. Very capable of giving my chump a good time, flattering him, making him feel nice and secure. First I fed him lunch. And I go to Van at the garden, we went for a stroll, our whole party, and I led them casually down to a specially outfitted training quarters. Mm. Yeah, I gotta try, General. What do you think of him? Fast, isn't he? What's his name? I call him young Sancho, of course. Good and I can fight. Uh, uh, I mean, you know, no, 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 no. No, he, he's fighting for the first time next Thursday. You've heard us get Burke. Well, I understand Burke pretty good. I've gone and come over and go a few rounds with young Frank, so I'm uh, making up a first for the winner. I hope to find out next Thursday. amused at the idea, that's all. Idea of what? Well, uh, see, I was planning to make up the first of $10,000 on the fight, and he tried that right away from I want to make sure that my winning to come the first, don't you see? <laughs> 75? Yeah, I might possibly be able to bet a stake to put it in this one. Oh, that'd be fine, Mr. Yeah, I might possibly be able to bet a stake to put in this Oh, that'd be fine, Mr. Yeah. <laughs>
But he was to get this by being a little rude. I think it's his time to put the 35, and now he's begging to give me 45. And he's going to the bank of the valley to be a Christian on 4th. By first the afternoon, Dan Pierce, my son, thought to receive him in the first place. Had forty-six thousand dollar bills in pocket, one of them mine, as he was going to give them one in the rest of the thing. It would end up in my pocket for Returns in just a moment with the third man. I'll take you $75, too, if I can't get any larger action from these gentlemen. My wager on Burke is $46,000, Mr. Lyon. Oh, fine, fine. You can get cash, too. Well, give it to Jenny here. And Jenny, here's my answer. Oh, Mr. Lyon, I hate to be carrying all this money Getting around. heavy, is it, Jenny? <laughs> <laughs> all right, then, Pierce. Suppose you be appointed custodian of the state. Oh, come no, on, no. come on, old man. I'm sure everyone here trusts you. <laughs> well, can I get any more action? If not, there's just one more thing I want to say before we all go to the ring. I presume I can trust you not to mention that the uh, entertainment was held out there. Let's protect the licenses and the fighters and the managers involved. I have your assurance. Then let's all go. Fight across the start. Pierce, you got those stakes all right? <laughs> hey, let's go. Never watch the manager know his girl who is trying to act in it. Don't think the first one should be very proud of that. Down to the garden for the ring, and that's where the best three dozen is. And you could be altogether kind of trained as the second for every and all of them, of course. Ian on my little scheme, except just one, Mr. Stan Beers. Fortunately, they weren't all on my payroll. They were friends, with gamblers, confident men, that girl's anxious to do me a favor, and anxious to do the work for fun. Fight is in the ring now, every thought that I have to watch them, but I just have to watch beers too. First round. Fight is pretending to beat each other out. Fancy is putting on a show of fancy footwork. 
leading Orson Welles as the third man. The Lives of Harry Lyon. The fabulous stories of the immortal character originally created in the motion picture The Third Man with Zither music by Anton Jarrett. Now, Italy, my children, as you probably know, is shaped like a boot. Beneath the boot is Sicily. That's where I was when I started again. Very much as though the boot had kicked me there. Very much what happened. I suppose that Sicily is really as nice as the travel coast would say, but I didn't have much of a chance to check up on it during my stay. I was too busy running away. Look, I got a plan to the snow cap tip of Etna for a moment, and I saw the orange grove. I must have run through and dodged around most of the orange grove. Very lovely as well. Very Sicily. But like the man said about California, a wonderful place if you're an orange. I think he's big too. Oh, 
Especially now he's a hotel girl, and I mean, he's here a palace in some big terms also. And after a walk to brood over this question, he's a poor moon and a large, fast, Sicilian star world doing that bit. The air was busy with the perfume of flowers, and the carriage over the sea was going to be perfect. Hello. Hello. Nice night. Huh. What's the problem? Look at that moon. Yeah. Smell those flowers. Okay. Here it is, one of the most gorgeous and beautiful moments that there ever was in the history of the world. And what have you got to say about it? It's a nice night. Well, it is. It's just like all the other Americans. You're only interested in mundane matters like money and jokes. Well, you're Emily Hickenlooper. How did you know? Why, just yes. Excuse me for being so rude, but I'm nervous with it. Oh, no, you just hate me. Well, what do you mean? Jumping at conclusions. Well, you know, I might be more excited. But he's dead. I might be a ghost. Yes, I suppose you might be. No, but somehow I don't think you are. No? No. I don't think there are any more Byrons or ghosts of Byrons or anything. No? No. Okay, The whole world's so commercial nowadays, there isn't any more romance. Not even the Is that why you left Indianapolis or you left the city? I didn't leave Indianapolis. I left Minneapolis. That's right, Gus. Yeah. We can go back there for all of me. You've made Gus a very unhappy man. Unhappy? Yeah. He doesn't know the meaning of the word. There's no unhappiness in the grocery business. Well, supposing there's a failure in the tea shop. Supposing the asparagus withers with the asparagus down to the frozen food of the trees. It will just. Yeah. Suppose you're a nice young girl for a good looking girl for a bad and a girl who's used to love him. Oh, I love him, I guess. Well, that isn't the point. What's your name? Araldo Limo. You mean you're a Sicilian? Got an American accent. I went to finishing school in New Jersey. You're joking. Only